Armies, welcome back once again to another week of esports action right here on the CMS Esports League. I am Ravish to Ravish, also Ravish Man on the internet. So here by my side, but once again, my senior captain, that's all I was I ain't gonna lie, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> Caught me off guard with that one, but no, I am doing absolutely swell as always, and all is well to be back in the booth with you, Ravishing Ravish. It is absolutely spectacular that we get to go through yet another week of some amazing valorant and smash gameplay yes that is indeed correct my friend i could not have it and would not have it any other way i'm excited i'm enthralled and one could say i'm i'm appalled with what we have going on today but i'll go ahead and talk to you more about that as we have a schedule for today up to look at the matchups that we have going on all throughout our this this wonderful drill day as you can see all the high school matches that we'll be seeing with Red Shul versus Philip Barry, Garinger versus Charlotte, Seas versus JT, Myers, and Mallard, Hoff, Palisades, Province, and East Mech. But it doesn't end there because you know we got Olympic and Ardry, Ardry Kell, and then Butler and Hopewell. That's everybody. Yeah, that's the whole kit and caboodle right there. And I got to tell you, these teams are really starting to shape up because we, you know, made our little predictions in the earlier weeks trying to discuss where this is going to go. But now that we're a little bit halfway there, we get a little bit more of an inkling on how these rosters and how these teams are shaping up in the leaderboards. Take a look at this. Audrey Kell still undefeated alongside Butler and Olympic sitting currently 4-0 as we head into week five. Mm hmm. But and as as the rest of the scores do cascade down, we were talking about how things should flesh out and they have so far. Well, definitely, you know, like some of the leaders of the pack have maintained their standings, but the rest uh, have had a tough go of it. You know, actually, Independence, Jules, Rocky and West I, are only really competing in Smash alongside Harding and South Mac, uh, uh, alongside Harding, I should say. But, you know, the rest of them for, you know, North Mac, Phil Barry and South Mac, they've had tough times. And we'll see if this can be the week they can get the first win. Hopefully for them, that is a positive result. But of course, it's not only Valor that we have going on today. It will also be Smash as well. Because on the other end, this is these are the scores for the Smash lighter board as well yeah and you see some familiar teams here again some of them share an undefeated streak with their valorant cohorts but with that being said take a look it's a butler mallard creek myers park and olympic currently holding that those undefeated top four spots they're four and oh and audrey kell who is currently undefeated in valorant and, and over here on the smash side of things have taken one loss which is impressive on its own. You've seen Audrey Keller, right? It's uh, it was just handed them just last week as well. East Mech two are also not going down on a three one lead, but four O's across the board. A lot more, you know, undefeated teams on this side though, which remains the impressive nonetheless. And the rest actually are just here: Providence, South Mech, and Harding, and so on. Have you know been continuing to have a tough go of it? But once again, it's a brand new week and a brand new look from any for every single one of these teams so we'll have to experience and see what they do manage to show to us going into today yep and i cannot wait to get into it but with that being said let's take a look at our lineups going into our first match for valorant here tonight we have virtual high school and philip oberry as you can see it will be kgr jewel rogue sus imposter and gladiator making up that virtual high school squad and over there for philip oberry it's godly fade Firefang, Davy, and Golly Stepdad. <laughs> Great name. I don't remember seeing that one yet, but that's fun. <laughs> Aside from that, though, we have seen Virtual actually before. I believe Virtual got their first win just last week. In fact, and Philip Barry still looking to search for their first. But it is uh, anybody's games you go into it as, as these teams are so close in terms of standings. They can't switch things around. It could just be one forwards across the board. If Philip Barry does manage to get it, we can only wait and see until that does happen. And before, and before we head into our second game, let's also look at a second matchup as well. we got West Charlotte and Garinger, who are both 2-2. Two -two. Yep, and making up the lineup for West Charlotte, it's Swifty, Hector, Beans, Arisu, and Bosnia Gaming. And over there for Garinger, it's going to be a Gaming Agitus, Tandrew, Azurith, Oxygen, 
I am going to assume, and then Angela to or, or Angelia to wrap up that squad over there for Garinger. Both sitting at 2-2, looking to get that go-ahead win to put them in a 3-2 standing. So this is going to be a big match uh, for both sides here, looking to increase their standings in the overall uh, leaderboard. Mm-hmm. As uh, we are right into the game, my friend, here we go. With uh, with, with Illaberry and Virtual High School, As, uh, I'm not seeing the dad mate. Well, Dad Rogue is there, but there's also Chicken Sandwich, which is you know what, way better name. Now I want Chicken Sandwich. I also would like a chicken sandwich, but I want to take a moment to look at these compositions real quick. Of course, we're looking at Philip O'Berry with chicken sandwich coming in with the cypher pick on fracture. Seeing this more and more, it's becoming more common. I agree with it. It's fun. It's fine. Uh, no problems there, but I also find it interesting that both of these uh, compositions from both schools here, they're going with the double sentinel composition here on fracture. Interesting for their own strats too. I mean, Considering they both want to guess to play pretty safe and likely to play towards the defense as well. So for Philip with Barry, it's a smarter start, especially if they are to look to get the first one on the board. They give it the sight on fracture, allow everybody to just walk in and it'll be planted down for POB. Yeah, and you see, and this is why we go with Sage here on Fracture. That Ice Wall is more vital here on this map than most. I'm going to keep it honest with you here. And the way that they're executing it so far, not so bad, especially blocking off ropes. You're basically funneling your opposition into one of two entry points. And now you can see the retake is a little bit more difficult here as they try and push in in Virtual High School, sticking their ground, but that nade does make contact. And now we have ourselves a 3v3. Let's make it a 2v3. They're all just chilling on top of the spike. Every single one of them. And that, that works out. They peek out well enough. There's not a ton of util for the first round. Virtual high school. Get the first round of the board. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes you can't just go and look for a long sight line. Every now and again, you just got to stay on top of the spike and, you know, keep it clear. But with that being said, let's take a look at some of our smash action right there in the top right. Mm, yeah, we got, uh, I believe that's the Roy going up against the Parameter, in fact. I, in fact, divulged back into Smash a lot more recently. And I realized, you know what? I'm just going to stick to playing Little Mac because he's fun. Yeah, well, you can see already that uh, our boy Roy coming through with a one-stock lead already. But getting back into the action here in Valorant, you can see Virtual High School do get the comforts of having that little bit extra buying power and are going to use it. Instant trade right there coming from Red. Being able to take out the Sage. It's a 4v4. Smoking off here over towards A. Over there towards Ropes. And this is going to be a very slow push here. But with this extra buying power, having the Spectres in hand, Virtual High School should be able to make short work of Philip O'Berry. And there's one more person left on their bonus who naturally for Virtual High School. This should just be a matter of closing things out. One gun taken, but only just one. I'll stay alive with three members on the board still for virtual high school as look to reset gun run right now online for pop as we'll look to see what they do i'm getting off themselves i believe it should be just full guns across the board naturally yeah just a lot of vandals and it's full of util too for virtual high school i believe they have three specters left over and it shouldn't be any more buys past that but that maybe a stinger for themselves and as of right now virtual is just Looking to meander around to see where they can push and seems to be a five person B pushed from Arcade. And you know what? I've been having so much fun with this new season of Valorant because as the season goes on, I slowly but surely see less and less of the stinger. It's fading out of existence and I have never been so happy as to see this weapon just sort of go obsolete. And now as we're heading into round number three, there is still one stinger. It's still relevant. But a little bit less so, as you can see the push now going up to ropes, and they're able to clear out heaven, and the push is underway onto B site, and already one elimination does go the way of Philip O'Berry. Dry peeking out of a smoke, not recommended, definitely the flash for that, but otherwise Spike's still not down yet for Virtual High School, already losing one member, as Rogue and the rest have all got to escape back to Arcade, the smokes gonna allow them to be their cover. They could just look to double back and wait for them to push against them, Doing exactly that. They see Firefang up top. No. And they would manage to get the trade here. Either getting a gun here would be huge. And Rogue gets one. 
Yeah, but do they have enough time to actually get back up there, grab the Vandal, and avoid the danger all in the same time? As you can see, they do take ropes. They grab the Vandal. The Cypher is there and lurking. Meanwhile, the Spike has already rotated all the way towards A, and now the trades are coming out as well. Rogue able to at least get rid of the Cypher. Meanwhile, Fade here on the A site trying to keep them from planting, and now what is a 3v1 scenario, and unfortunately, Rogue nowhere near the Spike. Yeah, they took a bit too long to rotate over. I understand they definitely did get the, the one gun. It's not the Cypher, but... Issue is that your team is now just looking to enter in, and even the wall going up too. It all gets stopped. You have no cover at all, and you're in a decision where you're thinking you have to fight or you have to simply give it all up. As we're on to a brand new matchup, a smash as well between Dar between Mario and Inkling. I have seen some fantastic Mario play. I, I mean, first of all. Mario, to me, has always been somewhat underrated, even though they are a high-tier level brawler. But with that being said, I'm seeing more and more Mario lately. And believe it or not, I've actually seen a pretty impressive display of Mario, I think, either coming from Lazo or it might have been Apollo Kage. I cannot recall, but they played absolutely phenomenally with this Mario pick. So this is definitely going to be a danger. But right now, Inkling countering this Mario pick fairly well. Impressive. And Klings, I've realized as, as of late, very hard to play. As was that shot, <laughs> the, the double pop from R3D to take another and an out and a 5v3 post play situation once again for, for, for Philip Berry. Oof, they got to look to probably just start rushing to the site, but considering the economic situation, if they do lose this, they lose all their guns, we'll be able to save once again. They could also just save. Or they somehow take that shot. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's really not much to say after that one. I mean, it, the the spike is continuing to take away here, and it looks as though Philip O'Berry is running out of options as they just continue to get gunned down from every which way. Finally, they do find themselves on site, but out goes the molly. And that's enough to stop it as well. Now, Loss is stuck by themselves, and that should be enough delaying to just to ensure that they, they can no longer actually plan. All will take is a swing, but they run out of time. It's 13 health. Uh, on top of loss, and there we go. It takes the pick, and Arthur D gets out alive. Yeah, and then we get a brief view of our other matchup on Valorant. You can see the composition. They're bringing the Icebox, my favorite map in the rotation. And look at this. There's a Gecko pick coming out from what looks to be the defender side there, or rather the attacking side. And that mm -hmm. is interesting to say the least, just because Gecko is still relatively new. So it's interesting to see where they fall, especially when it comes to getting these picks on these maps. I mean, it's Icebox, I don't know if you know my friend, will no longer be in the rotation uh, starting off from starting off for next week. So uh, this could be the last time that we have to actually enjoy it for what it is. Let's take it all in for now. Now, you see, you say that, but, you know, Split was gone for a while, too, and then it came back. Icebox may be gone, but it will never be completely out of the equation. Icebox, I, I, I'm sure, will eventually come back. Oh, yeah, 100%. As, but one thing I hope that's not back are these new indicators for KJ ult. Because <laughs> those are very distracting. Either way, KJ ult used to secure the sites. As they're all now in, they're gonna use it. They're gonna use the wall up down by Link just to kind of at least cover one angle. The smoke already there to push out from underneath. Rogue in a 2v1 gets one. Nice shot. No swing out either, but Firefang. So go for the trade. Make it 3v2. So all just bouncing and weaving around the entire site. Two going to link up, up by arcade, going to go through tower. Virtual high school. They're still just holding on site, watching them walk in. And Firefire takes out the first, there's the second. They're just chilling by the spike. And you know what? I don't blame them. Just continue to run that spike down. They did the same thing over on B site. Remember, they didn't go high or long. They didn't try to play the sight lines. They literally just stayed on top of the spike and waited for the challenges to be made. And there you had it. Dad of Rogue. Rogue's dad able to come through with a huge elimination to secure the win for Virtual High School. 4-1 now on the board for Virtual High School. As the matchup between Mario and Clinton goes on down to one stock game. Did you get a little timeout? Yeah, that one could really go either way. That was looking rather interesting. But now we're going to check back in with Garinger in West Charlotte here in the pistol round on Icebox. I believe there is a small pause here, in fact, for a technical pause as well. <laughs> so, teams, 
as well look at smash but all right this game we wrapped it all up he knew the space i believe we got a commentary in this one that's fun oh yeah that's awesome you know because now some of the work has already been done for us so you know makes it makes things a little bit easier when you're trying to break things down especially when you see that mario was able to take the dub there over inkling but there's going to be no changes made they're going to go right back into it mario once again taking on inkling I mean, other than the middle platform, it's yeah, it's it's fun. I, I wonder what a friend on the other side thinks about this matchup. Let's go ahead and hear from him. Okay, he's gonna give them. He's gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I like that. That's great. Who is the benefit uh, of the doubt going to? I think Mario. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as long as it's not a Dr. Mario, then yeah, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt all the live long day. I still think Mario is one of the top tier brawlers in Smash, so absolutely. But with that being said, I think Inkling could definitely do a lot of work here, especially considering that Mario, for more often than not throughout this uh, first stock, has been covered in paint. Yeah, and almost, besides just a little bit of damage that has got over towards him, otherwise it's just been... You know, just bounced around constantly, but Inkling, though, as he's taking a ton of damage, needs to read up on the ink crucially, so it is all out. Oh, nice recovery. Yeah, Manala's going to take now is a solid smash, and there it is. They get the first stock off of Mario, and Inkling only suffering 60, not 70% there on their first stock. Not a bad start right here for Inkling. It's, yeah, man, it continues to be so, especially considering the Inkling. You know, I believe they got the uh, first uh, match here as well, so it could be a possible fuel situation between the two of them. Still one stock up, 124, though. Mario looking for the final hit. Yeah, and that's the dangerous thing about Mario is that they can pile on so much damage so quickly, especially when they get their up tilt up air combo, and they can just juggle all the way either up into the air or out towards the side, but they're not going to need it. It's just going to be a nice up smash to get that first stock off of Inkling. Oh, no bad here and already the Mario is a 70% both the two stocks. So I believe that the stock lead should still be in favor of the Inkling as we continue on throughout here. And you just put the Mario up to about 91 now, kill percentage. But Mario's doing a really good job of at least getting some solid hits back. And you see, those are those uh, up tilt up airs that I was talking about when Mario being able to get that juggle uh, mechanic down perfectly. Not so much as to just go for these big eliminations either up top or even in the side blast zones, but just to deal out that massive uh, amount of damage. As you can see, the percentages are now even as Mario looks to try and take this one and get that second stock off of Inkling. Still going to do something from here, but... Currently, yeah, it's just to be a trade. Mario actually manages to get the advantage on top of that. And I believe everybody's also just, oh, excited. Yeah, like he said, no block, no punish. Oh, he recovers? Never mind. No, he does? Oh, got the coins on there too. That's crazy. How's he keep doing it? Well, the thing is, is that Inkling is getting a, getting a lot of these smashes, but they don't have a lot of knockback power because Mario is hardly painted until finally Mario just simply couldn't take any more damage. And now we are down to the last stock. Inkling only suffering 13% on their final stock. Not bad at all. And now Mario almost fully painted, so this should be really conducive to them for the final stock for themselves. But no, Mario, once again, those constant up tilts. Yeah, that combo deals a massive amount of damage. And now trying to go for that spike off stage, missed, couldn't get it. But they're forcing Inkling back off stage, gets the slide kick, and Inkling can't recover. That is going to be the round win for Mario as we get to take a look once again of our Valorant map here on Fracture. Virtual high school. 5-1. This is timeout as well. To snowball to be... Because I'm side of the map, defending on it can be a little bit tricky, especially once you're on the site. And Rogue, 6 1, 3 K. To get the final as well. Yeah, and if you get a brief look there at our icebox map, it does look as though. It will be a 2-1 split here. Bonus round going the way of the attackers. And again, not too surprising. That's usually how it goes. So Icebox shaping up to be a pretty good matchup. Meanwhile, we're getting ready to head into round number eight 
here on Fracture between Philip O'Berry and Virtual High School. And this is going to be a rifle round. So this is going to be a huge one here for Philip O'Berry to try and start making a comeback. A lot of time in between. Four people rushing down to get to A past Dish. Uh, but with Fawny being spotted, though, it makes it tougher as they do have the spike. So not taking A sight may not be necessarily the play. They're rotating out would be ideal, especially now they've lost one, but. And they do exactly that. And like you said, it really is hard when you're trying to rotate in defense, by the way. When you're on the defender side of things, it makes it that much more difficult because you have to use that extra utility just to make sure that you don't give away sight immediately. So we already saw a good bit of utility used by Philip O'Berry, including the Boom Bot and the KO Molly. They're both gone. So now this is going to be a little bit of an easier take for Virtual High School if they choose to commit to this B site. Would be a matter of time. There needs to be a big mode of entry, though, or at least something to which allow them to walk in. They have the breach to possibly do that. Opens up a lane. Oh, but they walk in once again past the smoke into the cypher, giving up their lives for what was a doable entry. And now with no time left on their hands, this is the cleanup for Phil Barry. And you know what? This was their map to win. Well, this was their their round to win, rather. Uh, they still have a long way to go to actually win out the map entirely. But still, that was their round for sure. They needed to get a huge win. It was the rifle round. Everything was even. And now it looks as though we are going to get our first time out here. And I think that's coming from the side of Virtual High School. Yeah. No, I believe this is the second time out that they've had here already. Second? So wow. The second, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so one was already from, from POB. And one from from virtual high school, and currently no the two two teams of West Charlotte and Garinger continue to battle it out on the ice box map. They go on up, Blade Storm not gonna find anything as they go past the right clicks of the classic. No one has shot their gun yet. As finally they get two, oh, yeah. the one for one trader to say sorry. But West Charlotte now gone for South Thrash. He catches the Reyna in the corner. Lena's in trouble if anybody does manage to check them. But no one has just yet, so that should wear off. Still an opportunity for them to stay alive and get two more back, and there it is. Yep, Garinger able to come through and take yet another round over West Charlotte, giving them a pretty substantial lead. Nothing too crazy, but enough to make West Charlotte sweat a little. And you gotta take a look at this op right now on Reyna. Well, Lena operating the operator to its fullest potential making it worth their while and it's really interesting to see that come out so early it was only what round five they were in and already the op coming out mm-hmm i mean i'm surprised man if you remember bro we used to see we used to see ops as early as round three back when wardell was was a, a very prominent player right he would just go with the one pistol he save up for the next and op comes out so quick but also back was 4500 but one pick taken, no op this time. It's the one for one trade for the race is getting a, a single pick of their own. To clear out the site at the least, they go in past the smoke, they take down two. And it's a 4v2 Cornell site. And this is going to be a pretty tough retake for Philip O'Berry. 2v4 now. As you can see, Lost trying to line up here. Does get at least one head click. Is now trying to get the wall bang up top into heaven. It is a 2v2. And this could be a huge swing as now Philip O'Berry has the advantage. I can only imagine that this KJ has their mollies down, hopefully onto site. And they should be able to run this spike down. But with that being said, this is a great turnaround coming from Philip O'Berry. Oh. And they managed to take the 2v4 retake and get yet another round win for POB. No Molly's on site having to face check the spike. Also out of the open because it wasn't planted for a main either. Rough spot to be in. Losing the duel. Wow, from virtual high school, considering they just took a time out here too, just to recollect and regroup on what they wanted to do as well.
And you know what? We're getting a look back at our Smash match. And look at this. They went from the Inkling now onto the Lucas pick. And for a moment, I thought this was Luigi just because of the color change. But no, it's still Mario. And they are still doing a fantastic job currently with a, at least a three stock to one stock lead over this Lucas. But that looks like it's it's about to change. I can't believe they kept the number of characters at 149. That's so uneven and annoying. <laughs> like, I wish they put, I wish they just put Waluigi in and just put 150. Or even just, uh, just somebody, anything, put me in, honestly. Wait, if Red actually checked him, would, as he's checking the camera, would have been huge, but instead, we're just gonna walk into the smoke, there'll just be one about past the smoke there in the go to the crosshairs of the KO, and I'll put it on fire if I had to clean up three from the long angle. Wow. This is insane right now. Philip Berry on three unanswered wins all back to back all consecutive playing absolutely out of their minds meanwhile they are a busting up the economy look how much money they are sitting on and now it looks as though virtual high school are going to have to come in big in this next rifle round or they are going to be absolutely bankrupt in terms of economy so virtual high school they are going to have to salvage this one if they want to remain on top at least in the first half P.O.B. could easily make this even. Red with a good start off in virtual high school, changes the pace going into the round. A lot more slower, a lot more patient. Seeing that P.O.B. was getting a lot more, like, seeing the P.O.B. was getting much more aggressive against them as well. Holding closer angles and not afraid to check them before the spike even goes down. And these stacks here, once again, with no side of rotation, P.O.B. look to go back on B, under tunnel, but. I find rotation over to A would probably be more worth it. Two now gone. So 5v3. Yeah, it doesn't even seem as though that they're really playing for sight right now. They're playing for the picks, and they were able to get two early ones. Now that we put the KJ alt down, now that lockdown goes out, this is the time where you play for sight. You're able to put yourself on, get the spike plant, and then play for retake. So again, nice execution coming from virtual high school, but they are slowed down just a little bit by that ice wall. As yet, the spike... Unfortunately for a virtual high school has yet to be planted. Spike planted. As that now goes down. POB still like on the outside to take and pass the wall. It just simply just checks that data rogue. And as he st slowed it down a little bit, they missed the alt. But now one on site and one looking past tower in 2v2. All you gotta do is delay the wide swing. From this age will em eliminate any sort. I do they currently have. Ellie Data Road to play off site with the orbital strike. But they can't just check him. They might run out of time before doing that though. Puts it down early. They try to run at him. It's <laughs> two for Data Road. Oh, you love that. Considering that, you know, they knew the orbital strike was in play. They were waiting for the orbital strike to come out. They went for the for the hunt, the prowl on for rogue. And uh, the orbital strike isn't even what got the final two eliminations. It was just good old fashioned gun game rogue able to find two back to back head clicks, kind of wasting the orbital strike, but I guess not really. They still got both the eliminations. It's impressive. And I mean, it did kind of like slave them off, but even if they did manage to check him, I find they decided that they just couldn't defuse and they were trying to save. Still got taken down. So. Unfortunate timing, I guess, in general. Well, let's see if Philip Oberry can try and answer back here, as this should be the last round and a half, if my math isn't mistaken. This is round 12. As you can it see, is. it looks as though Philip Oberry are unfortunately at a disadvantage. They do lose one in the process. As you can see, Rogue trying to push through the smoke, but the Sage Wall goes up. And that should buy them at least a little coverage, but it's not going to help them with the spike plant as the orbital strike goes out, but the spike still goes down. Three, two. Oh, the immediate check in. Well, leave Red to try to get one. Have to look to stop the defuse first, and they do so. It's that half, but oh. Just one taken, fade with the timing. It's seven to five to close it out. 
Yeah, Faye definitely made that one look good, uh, especially being able to use the jump pack to go horizontal, get the quick head flick, and then get the defuse as well. But, let, I mean, let's be honest. Red, unfortunately, was not going to be able to come through, I don't think, either way, because even if they weren't going to get gunned down by the opposing player there in A-Main, they were still going to get a showstopper to the face. We saw that Fade was there and waiting to use the ultimate. So, I mean, it feels as though that um, Philip O'Berry... No matter what, we're going to come away with a solid dub there. And now we're going into the half here with a 5-7 to seven split. Not bad for either side. Not bad at all. Which, uh, which is impressive, especially considering POB has had a really rough start. So, easy comeback for them across the board. Well, I should say, but, but it has been a somewhat of a run. And as a side switch up, will Virtual High Score deliver the same sort of performance that we've already experienced? I thought a tower should really spot one person plus and smoke past the flash. So makes it in before any sort of cover sees one. He gets stopped in front of the wall. But that's kind of just it. No, the nade. <laughs> the stairs is unfortunate. <laughs> Not even gonna allow them to enter the bomb site. Virtual high school, <laughs> solid defense, but <laughs> the spike is going another direction. Now you see that's interesting because that's usually the type of defense you save for Lotus. You know, you make the stand still at site. You don't allow the spike to even reach the site, and then you just lock it down. But Virtual High School took this approach and they brought it to Fracture. That is absolutely interesting, especially considering how on a lot of these uh, namesake maps, you know, like Haven, you know, you usually play for retake. But no, Virtual High School was able to stop this aggression in its tracks, and now Chicken Sandwich from the flank able to get one, and now it's all down to this one v one. It's entirely possible, but there's 20 seconds. So the double back is interesting for, for Chicken Sandwich, but look, let me watch the angle, and they heard it all right below the running back and forth. Virtual with the first round. in quite some time. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like we're getting ready to go into a listen-in for our other matchup there on Icebox. I mean, that's what that's what the overlay says. It says listen-in, but I, uh, let's see. This is interesting. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think we missed it. I think we missed oh, we it. Missed That's it. unfortunate. No. I, I would have loved it too because this, it would have been our first listen in at least as long as I've been on the desk uh, for yeah. for a Valorant matchup for CMS. That would have been awesome. You know, I love listenings. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it would have been cool because I know they do them a lot in other esports like you know like Apex and COD as well. So it was always fascinating. They don't see the most PG things, though, to be fair, uh, in the little set ends, so I don't know how well it could have worked, but it would have been definitely cool as in terms of how the comms are going. Nonetheless, though, for now, it's now on West Charlotte. Down 8-2. This rounds look to be crucial for themselves, but they're on the pistol. The wingman uh, almost didn't have the plan. A nice swing out from Hector. Two taken, still stuck in the corner. Uh, staying alive is the key part here. Spike not recovered just yet. As Raymond gets two back, it's 3v2. All they gotta do is swing on him, but he instead gets swung on first. 1v3 to close things out. And Bosnia on the outside. Only with 12 health remaining, too. It does not look good for Bosnia right now in this 1v2 scenario. As you can see, Cheeto fan does make their way in, but they're not needed. Hollow able to end it here and there. Being able to get the round win for Garinger, and now they are going into the last round into the half. And in Garinger enjoying a comfortable seven round lead. Really impressive stuff for themselves. Now Garinger can just can do snowball this far further and further as well. Being you know so far up, a 10 to 2 half looks incredible, especially on Icebox because once you switch over to the attack, one pistol round can definitely just make all the difference for themselves. Yeah, and you can see over there on our other site for Fracture, they are getting ready to head into their next round as well. Meanwhile, Cheeto fan trying to get some cheeky peeks with the op there, and there's no better place for the op to be than in the hands of a jet. Don't Ooh. at me, but Bosnia able to get the first head click and the first frag here in round number 12 between Garinger and West Charlotte. Allows Hector to enter the game. 
Gonna Gringer as well. The two on the outside for the retakes so should be able to peek right under the stairs and they have the Empress. It'll be up to Lena to make the entrance in. I just say it, but Lockdown will do an even better job. Gets peeked one for one by the end of it. Makes it two left alive for both these sides. They have Blade Storm on one end. Watch Charlotte still just sticking towards the back of the spike. And they have to check them some way, somehow. But look at what Gringer is holding. They can just completely go off. They don't have to push aggressively. They know what they're hiding as well. And they see one more. The open op shot given over. And Hector has no time to defuse. It is definitely not looking that way, especially with the blade storm right around the corner. Not. And out goes the op, but it doesn't matter. The spike will detonate, and the dub does go to West Charlotte. So really, I mean, the operator, unfortunately for Cheeto fan, wasn't that viable when trying to get this spike defused. I confused myself. The entire I because Garage was playing like they were playing off site as if they planted a spike. So I was <laughs> befuddled <laughs> personally, but otherwise it makes sense as to how that round was lost. And that's for now, after a pistol given over, it is immediately regained for POB. And uh, this uh, uh, this map here, this round, this game, nearly set back even at eight to eight. Philip O'Berry making an insane comeback. At once was, I believe, a six to one split in the favor of Virtual High School. Now only down within one between uh, these two of being equalized. But we're heading into some smash action now as we have Mario going one on one against Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, I believe our, our commentator friend on the other side who's also excited about the Pikachu. It is the, I believe the first Pikachu of the evening. I believe you mentioned the Mario is 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 the third or fourth one that, that they've seen so far. And this is just a classic matchup. You know, this is the type of matchup you could get back on the 64 version of Smash, and it just brings back all such happy nostalgia times of the N64 in the 90s. But with that being said, here in 2023, Mario versus Pikachu still goes absolutely brazy so i'm all here to enjoy what game system was contra on that would be the snes ah that's the one that i had the super nintendo a super nintendo because all technology came to india very late so so we were kind of just always stuck at least like one like generation behind way back then uh which was tough so when you guys are playing with your 64 is we had the SNES. Yeah, I never actually owned the 64. I just went over to my friend's house next door because they had, not because, but you know, they had the 64. So that's, you know, kind of how I was able to play it as well. And uh, you could see that Mario is going to be down the first stock here. Pikachu looking pretty good in round number one. Really solid start for themselves as we can, we can take a peek back over the ice box games that we were seeing before going on but let's see if mario gets his start he's at 108 just get him take him bada bing bada boom come on i don't know so close pikachu is just too speedy and you got to watch out for that thunder strike as well that's thunder strike can deal so much damage as you can see pikachu does recover and finds themselves back on stage but i don't know i just think the pacing of this pikachu this might be too, a little bit too quick a little bit too speedy for mario Mm, maybe, yeah. It's hasn't been able to touch him. I was hoping for it to be a bit closer, but there we go. Finally, we did it. They can get straight right from here, though. Pikachu's can be just up one stock once again, only at about twenty-seven percent, and and Mario is very, very is, is a very dangerous territory. I want to say. Oh, absolutely. They are within elimination potential. They're sitting at 115. And now take a look at this. It will be 131 after that. What appeared to be a forward throw could be mistaken. But it all will take just one solid smash coming from this Pikachu in order to take the second stock off of Mario as we find ourselves here back off stage. One more to be taken, but... Oh, almost, almost there. This, he still hasn't been able to actually equalize it at all. So it has been a good holdout from the Mario. So pretty even match between the two of them. 
Oh, absolutely, and a nice little forward throw there coming from Mario. And keep in mind, Mario does not need much to get an elimination on Pikachu. 95% is more than elimination potential for Mario as they try and land this final smash in order to take this second stock off of Pikachu. But it is so even, and that slide kick nearly getting the job done, but Pikachu recovers. None of them actually been able to do it. Ooh, chill breaks, and finally Pikachu gets the elimination. Right from here, Mario has stage control. All you gotta do is just get a couple hits back, but I know that too. So he's playing for, for survival and damage. Worked himself up to 60% already. What? That hits? Yep, nice little dodge there. And again, the dodge is going back and forth here. They're just rolling, trying to avoid the edge. The back throw does connect it up. Pikachu going way off stage, can't recover. And now it will be a one stock versus one stock, but with still over 100% damage already done to Bungo. Bung, yeah, I think, you know what? I would also say that as well. So, two Bungo uh, makes it tougher. Try to get the Thunder Strike. What? At 83, he gets him. I was telling you, Mario doesn't need that much uh, for elimination wow. potential on a Pikachu. They can definitely get the job done, and they did. Taking that last stock and getting the win. As now we head back into some more Valorant action. Round number 18, currently underway for Philip Berry in Virtual High School. I believe our Icebox maps did end up closing out here, too. Um, you know, on uh, on the side that was up. Actually, never mind. No, that's still at 11. Okay, nice. 11-4. So we 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 still got time there, so we can at least check back in on that. But once virtual high school perhaps takes this round. So spread around, waiting for them to push in onto A. They are in the area. Just looking for these sound indicators. Not checking the corners. One taken. But runs out of ammo. Red stays alive. And past the door they go. I have retrieved the spike. Yeah, that wasn't bad whatsoever. I think they might have had a little bit of time to try and control their recoil, but it doesn't matter. Red comes in with yet another limb and lost. The only player remaining for Philip Berry. 30 seconds left. Not much doing here, and only time continuing to take away, and they can't even make their way back to the spike as it will yeah. be Dad of Rogue to get the final elimination and the round win for Virtual High School. Yeah, that that'll be all that seals as well. As we see, Rafa Garinger. Oh, listen, nice, nice, nice. Let's see. And they just like kept coming, you know. There's nothing we could have done. Yeah, it's fucking just to find off. Oh, these are fast blows. Wait, and they and I'm still not back. You guys are still playing. Yeah, they're still having us play. I have the spike. This one. Yeah. This one. Alright, that was, that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah, it, you could tell they're getting just a just a little frustrated right now with the way that things are going. I mean, it's a it's an eleven four deficit in favor of Garinger, yeah. and uh, you know it just you could just tell that you know they uh, the, their endurance has been tested here on Icebox. Mm -hmm. You thrash to scope around, nice shot with the also with the assist. So three v three. Hopefully, use the wingman to get the defuse out. Ooh, and Bosnia on top is uh, absolutely carrying the one, try to get one more, and they stop right, both right. attempts. Insane. The Heartless Fury on the outside will nullify all right. the attempts. Oh, I believe Hector had not made it back yeah. on the round. Uh, now, you see, that would justify some frustration. You know, we heard from the listening that things sounded a little heated, and maybe that could be the reason why. You know, they're down a player, unfortunately. They do have one AFK, could be a disconnect. Uh, and it looks as though they are going to call for attack pause. And that's what feels bad when that happens because there's really nothing you could do. You can't get that round back. That round is forever forfeit. And now, unfortunately, for their side of West Charlotte, they are on match point. So, uh, again, it, I can understand the frustration there. Mm -hmm. A tough go of it, naturally. And on this side as well, Pilpaberry doing their best to 
stay alive and not give the entire game away to virtual high school. This round is crucial for themselves as well. It's a one for one, nice swing out past the flash, and it's three taken so quickly for Fibbleberry. And a 2v4 retake on our mind. They make that one. Virtual High School just has to forego this entire round. And yeah. I was going to wish him the best of luck, but I don't even think that would have helped. It's going to be a round win going to Philip O'Berry. Yeah, it was uh, honestly, as soon as they entered past the smoke, just super aggressively and rushed them down, they they already lost so many so quickly. And now the side of Garinger. Uh, he, 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 on match points. Oh, Ooh. Oh, shit. Nice first shot. We still got less than a calm. Just go hear them real quick. He fucked us up. I was only, I was only just about to peek him and he, and he shot me down. I swear there's someone. Oh, yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Right. Garinger oh, just immediately lost that round so quick. <laughs> wow. Bro, I got one shot. Unfortunately. I'm going 17. I mean, I guess it's unfortunate for West Charlotte, but it, it seems like it's very fortunate for Garinger. I mean, they're playing pretty well, all things considered. I mean, they're even using an offensive op. That, to me, seems a little difficult. Uh, but again, that's just me, though. I am also terrible at Valorant. Uh, you know, give or take, depending mm -hmm. on where you're sitting on the scoreboard. But with that being said, using the op offensively and still finding the shots, truly impressive, especially here on Icebox. Yeah, the and the wall was put out pretty early. They could look to break it instead. They use the ultimate scope up past B, just get any information, see no see nobody there. And instead, Spike still decently far back. Perhaps they can sneak it into B if possible. Oh unfortunate timing. They're catching the gecko beans as well. Now look to be checked. They can double swing on top of him wide as where Lena goes. That's two right away. And now it's going to be a 3v2, making a 3v1. Garinger again being able to get the head click. As you can see, Arisu now trying to make their way over towards the B site. Has the bird and does get at least two blinds in the crossfire, but it won't be enough. They still get gunned down in the end, and that game will go the way of Garinger. That'll put Garinger up to 3-2 uh, with a score moving up in the standings. Universal High School looking to do exactly that as well. Fighting their way out round by round as a trade by Rogue. Wanted to put them at match point if possible. It's a 4v3 as they have the res here too for, for, Phil, for Phil Berry. They can't bring somebody back to make things even. Well, they can certainly try here. As once again, it looks as though Philip Berry having a difficulty getting onto site, which again is very interesting on fracture more often than not i'm used to seeing fracture defense usually align playing for retakes but they're not even allowing them to get on site they're not even going to attempt the retake they know they have the player advantage and they're going to try to make the most of it here as you can see the rotation now heading back underway over towards b but take a look at this cypher with the spike is going to take ropes all the way across now to the defender side of the map Traversing in, using an iPhone tower, seeing nobody there, but there are the mollies around, though. As is the Killjoy, who can look to stop them if they want to try to plant this. But Race is gone on the entry. They'll just take they'll take one more, and they're being stopped as they get as they as the spike gets caught on the other side. This is so detrimental. The Philip Berry about to go and try to recover this, but they're getting pinched. That's one right away. Destroy can't even go past it. And you know what? I don't know if it was a lack of communication because I think the rope swing wasn't a bad idea. I just don't think you should have taken the spike with you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough when you're going solo dolo like that on something that you think that you could possibly do. But for now, a timeout for Phil Boberry, the final one, as you do not want to go down just yet. And you see, this is going to be an interesting bout right here because you have Fox going up against Greninja. And, and I'm torn, honestly. I'm torn between the two. My heart wants to say Greninja. Well, I want to favor Greninja in this matchup, but Fox is just so good. And I'm really 50-50 split on this one, uh, Ravish. I think Greninja is still weird because of all the things that he's got going on. Like I said, he uses his tongue as a scarf. He's tasting the air and molecules constantly. Can't stand it. <laughs> but 
Otherwise, though, uh, I like Greninja personally a lot more. I think he's a really fun, fast character and makes for like, interesting combo styles because, you know, I'm like I said, mentioned I'm also a fan of, of the Lucario, so similar styles, but just a faster Pokemon. Well, you can see they are definitely trading blows here over towards the left side of the stage, finally going back to the center stage. And this is where Greninja actually is a little versatile because not only are they absolutely spectacular off stage, but if you bring them to the center, they can also take you up and towards the air as well. Their aerial juggle is pretty good, especially taking you all the way out and towards the blast zone, which makes Greninja uh, somewhat of a dual threat. But Fox right now currently in the favor of the, the damage percentage, but not for long as that first stock does go the way of Fox and now they have a one stock lead. Nice start off from them. And the last we rotate on over. It is one taken right away by red. That's the KO gone as well for POB. Their initiator already with it. You know, one of the biggest ultimates being the be an all command taken away. Well, very still do have a lot of options for themselves if they wanted to use it. Nice! Showstopper and another taken right away. They see more there. Try to get the res back and it cost them everything. Over the strike put down. They'll take one, but it's to get past the wall. They're dumping everything into A main and they see the Cypher. He doesn't get anybody! Oh, this is so unfortunate. Yeah, and I don't think Philip Berry got anyone with the showstopper either. So that was a, is a little bit of a feels bad for POB. But with that being said, they did force literally every player from virtual high school to corral onto the A site, giving them somewhat of a free plan on B. But look who is there and waiting. It is the KJ from virtual high school. 3v4, still entirely possible. They'll delay the plant here once again. Locked down here to... Failed, but Barry is running out of options. He's going to have to just commit to the plant. Uh, to play off site, Molly goes wide. And through this, I'm surprised that nobody actually checked them. This is big, so that they're literally played inside. They're locked on to do this. And now in a 1v3, they won? <laughs> you sound so surprised. <laughs> no, I was just, I'm just taking all in that three of them died so quickly. I'm like, what happened? I'll be honest, How? I was surprised. <laughs> like, I see a 4v3 in the favor of Virtual High School. I'm thinking they're going to take it, but no. Philip will bury, able to answer back in a major way. And it is possible now, Ravish, that we could have ourselves extra rounds here on Fracture. Entirely so, my friend. Virtual High School needs one more round to close things out. All the ultimates are almost gone. But Null Threat and Null Command still available from POP side. And although... It went down early. They'll use an all command right away to just enter the site simply. Now is where she, now is where it should start to take effect, but should not do more than that. Uh, just a running swing, two taking out, make that three. Yeah, we're going overtime. That's what it seems like, but keep in mind there has been a 2v4 retake, but this is a 2v5, so an even taller order. It's still possible. It's just not very probable. As already you can see, Dad of Rogue trying to work their way in. I mean, we've had it before, but it would have to give them just complete 1v1s every single time. See, one more in the corner. That is two gone. Wait, Orbital Strike is there and available. It at least push them all back into A main or at least past the stairs to see one near the wall. The cover is there. It's 1v2. That's OT. <laughs> That it is. We're heading into extra rounds here on Fracture. And honestly, I'm not that surprised. I, I would like to be more surprised, but Fracture is something about this map. I don't know what it is. And maybe it's just me, but if Fracture to me is just so difficult to really pin down. I still feel like there isn't even like a set strategy most of the time because, you know, more often than not, you have to come up with some type of spectacular play in order to really shake things up. So, again, Fracture is just one of those maps that's just so hard to read uh, effectively. And I think it shows here, once again, we see ourselves going into overtime, going into round 25. And uh, you had mentioned earlier that this is an offensive-sided map. So I wonder how that's going to translate as now we get ready to head into overtime. Back and forth, back and forth we went. POB desperately wants the first win and passes time out. I have to see if they can possibly get it because the rounds have been just so shaky from both sides so far. But the Fox was able to translate the win last time against the Greninja. We'll see how they do against the Inkling. And this 
is interesting. Again, I'm kind of torn here. It's not that so much I'm a huge fan of Inkling. It's just when you're going up against Fox, who isn't, you know, the heaviest player, I feel like the Inkling can definitely deal a lot of damage initially and if they are able to build up the paint. But that's going to be the real big difference maker here. And also, you know, being able to really close the gap in on this Fox, who likes to play a little bit of this give and go type of combat. Uh, I think Inkling can definitely stand a solid chance here. But as of right now, though, no paint thrown on the box just yet, right? There's a decent bit of damage, and it's just blow straight. That's it. It's a nice bomb. But as it, okay, box managed to recover. Not bad, but trading size is once again unideal. But good recovery, second time in a row, in fact, for the Fox. But also nearing territory, they might be in trouble as you head back into the OT. Yep, and here we are. This is where things start to get a little bit nuttery buttery here on Fracture. Round number 25, the beginning of OT, and really could go either way because it is going to be a solid buy coming from both sides. I've even seen some instances, not all, but some, probably not here in this matchup, where they forego all utility and just buy op off the rip. Now, I don't see that happening. I don't think it's happening, but it can be done. A lot of things start to kind of come into question when you go into those extra rounds because both sides have equal economy so you really don't know what they plan to bring especially on a map like fracture where you kind of have to go have to go outside of the box in order to really get the advantage over your opposition and no advantages are there right now for either side three center one rotating just blind firing through the smoke at a slow place from both ends realizing that the rushes it not have been the most ideal part of all this. Yeah, they stack up as well. Taking two down. Virtual High School finally have the advantage as Phil will barely get cornered and centered on a site of their choosing. And stuck to look around in a 2v5. And Virtual High School looking really good so far here in extra rounds. They are holding the site down, which has been their defensive strategy the entire time. Again, you know, they really haven't been playing for retakes. They just go into site, they commit, and they stack. And just like that, they managed to get the spike planted and have taken full control of the A site. And a 1v5 comeback is frankly impossible. Uh... <laughs> And I was right on that. It's a nice first kill. You go ahead and give the NTs in the chat. And now Virtual High School. Again, one round away from closing it all out. And you you see, this is, you know, just to further the point that you had made earlier, that this is an offensive-sided map. We are here in OT, and of course, the first win does go the way of the offense. But with that being said, Virtual High School, once again, find themselves on match point. They can end things here and now if they stick to a solid defense. As you can see, thanks to our little minicam, Fox was able to take the win over Inkling as well. That's two back-to-back -back dubs for that Fox pick. Fox has been killing it so far, so shout out to them. It, 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 it has been close matches between them two. Nonetheless, for now, looking back on the Valorant side, though. Already one taken out for Philip. We're very not sure how that happened either way, but Bobby's pushed that a bit too far, getting caught. Unideal. Okay, yeah, they were looking to go into arcade by themselves. And now instead, they'll fake towards B. Instead, go to A. There is the killjoy set up there, so should be spotted if they do go in. It's a little bit of time. And then, you know, I'm looking at the side of Philip O'Berry, and once again, you have that lurky cypher all the way in CT, finally making their way back towards the A site, and you can see this is where the commitment is going to be. They're heading over towards A, Red going for a deep flank here, comes out of the side, they know they're there, tries to throw out the nade, but hits the wall, uh, oh no. All good. Dashy, Dashy, Dashy did not want that nade, I think he wanted to just, you know, flex on it a little bit. So that how much better he was without it. And I'll leave them now in a 2v4. Same situation. No breeze this time goes past the wall. And doesn't get seen, but there's somebody on site. A crucial mistake that I think from here will cost in the round. A 1v4 for chicken sandwich. But 15 seconds, it'll just be a matter of time before they just either run out of time. Or they get taken out. And they're running, but... My friend, there's no more chances after this. There's no more OT. This is the game. So running will do you no good. 
Yeah, I think that is just a big solid G and G. Good games all around. Having to go all the way in the OT. So you got to give them credit where credit is due. They definitely made that an interesting um, game to watch from start to finish. As now we head back into some more Smash action. And once again, we have Fox versus Inkling. The Vox, if you remember, the last time it has a was matchup before, although in a really close bout and was up against the, I believe it was the Mario before this as well. So, so, so continuation of their possible dominance there and present. Well, you can see Inkling off to a fantastic start here as they do get a little bit of a percentage lead over Fox currently trying to really work the edges here. Not a lot of action going down in the mid, and it will be the first stock going away of Inkling after that huge forward smash. Nice start, but I wonder if Inkling can continue to equalize that here too. Takes a decent bit of damage, gets popped up, but... Nothing more in terms of continuation. Oh, a big hit, but DI is out of that well. And now in elimination potential, it will be yet another up smash to get the elim, and we are down back even to two stock apiece, zero to zero. Nothing seen, though, but, but a lot of paint put on Fox. Like, he is covered in yellow so this things get a little really soft for him and wants to make sure he takes nothing at all for the advantage and yeah recovers beautifully not a single hit landed wow he had changed colors absolutely not and once again they're applying those up smashes and they just keep connecting time and time again and they deal so much damage meanwhile you do see inkling starting to try and rebuttal here making a little bit of a comeback in the percentages but will it be enough the back throw is there it connects out goes the bomb it also lands but they can't get the elimination confirmed although the paint has now completely covered fox the recovery with the back air will connect and they take a one stock lead A beautiful start off here now for Neo. We were seeing how the Dominus was going to proceed, how well they were doing, and this right here is exactly what, what I wanted to see started from themselves. It's 154, trying to dodge things, but how much longer could they do it? I don't think much more. Recovery back on stage. The percentage is so high, any small bits of knockback will send them flying. The, the survival in itself though was impressive on its own, but shouldn't be much longer. <laughs> certainly wasn't as now you can see we are back down to one stock apiece and once again fox wasting no time here going right back to dealing the damage inkling now trying to answer back is able to get a good amount of paint onto the fox but this time they're gonna have to try and figure a way to take advantage of all that paint before it just simply goes away yeah still though tough for the inkling as that 104 and then almost also almost out of pain so they're gonna need the knockback oh good bit of time to get some of it but neo though keeping their space you know both of them on opposite ends of the stage so far nothing really taken as they're just trading shield blows yeah a lot of cautious play coming from both sides they know they're in the danger only one stock left both an elimination potential and it will be the up air again but no inkling still in this some way somehow i do not know how the inkling's managed to survive at 137 one more decent hit will manage to take them out once again should be up top want to flip things around they don't want to give things away but uh, harder than falling here man yeah this is getting a little bit too close for comfort now for both the back throw does connect fox forced off stage can they recover just barely as both will now end up back onto stage no edge guard there from inkling either and the next hit should definitely get it as that little up tilt is enough to create some space but not enough to confirm Decent some lot of options but bomb dodged and inkling once again same situation not much ink to actually work with so they need the space right now both of them a super high percentage any more than go down at any time as a one hit game any side to be a grab near the edge of the stage can do it and 
This is the exact position that we are thinking of. Fox at the side, maybe. That's it, but no. Can goes down, reverses it. They're both still surviving somehow, but there's no paint on them. That's why. So no knockback. Yeah, and that's the real shortcoming with Inkling here, but you can see Fox ah. does finally go down after applying so much damage. Even with a high percentage of damage on themselves, they still managed to hold on to take that last stock and to take the win over Fox. Mm hmm indeed so my friend they did but that is of course only a first set of games we have a lot more of that coming at y'all but we'll see you back after a quick break
homies welcome on back once again hope you had a nice little break when we got some water drank some air and breathed in some sunlight as we are now about to head back into some more valorant as you were saying yep that we are and we are already halfway uh, uh, nearly halfway through this matchup here nearly yeah yeah almost there eight two split right now in favor of jt williams over seek and it has been quite the doozy. Again, you know, where I want to take a look at these compositions here on Icebox because it looks almost like a mirror matchup, with the exception, of course, you know, you're looking at the Breach instead of the Sova. You get a Reyna on one side, and, you know, you're looking at JT Williams, and they don't even have a Duelist in their composition. So that, to me, is very interesting. They incited, decided instead to go double Sentinel, double Initiator. Very interesting. Double... No, so no duels icebox I find has been pretty common for a while in terms of the compositions, but having got to see it a ton because icebox has been out of the rotation for a decent amount of time now. So I do wonder how it'll evolve once it, once, it, once it does come back. Nonetheless, for now though, JT Williams now went for a 3v3. They've been going on an absolute run so far. The spike goes down though, makes a 1v2 on the side, being salad man with one inside the Viper's pit. And now for JT Williams, they only have one person alive being Moss. You're gonna have to enter the Viper's Pit as well. Looking around, I believe they're aware of this, and it's easy. The moment we hop in, they lose around. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, Seek definitely needed that win. Not to say that they're, you know, they underperform usually. I'm just saying in that particular instant, talking about the first half of Icebox, they need as many wins as they can get, especially against JT Williams. This is a very uh, well-established team. They know how to operate. They have a pretty good standing right now. Their record yeah. is nice. And this is a team that knows how to play Icebox. So you want to try and get as many wins offensively as you can against the likes of JT Williams. And right now, going into the half, even at an 8-4 split, isn't the best look starting off. Yeah, this I is a... Uh, you could say... They like were saying they're, they're very well organized, well put together, got great head on their shoulders. They're... Probably great people as well. Really good at calculus. I don't know how else we can, else we can compliment them. But unless we can sell it, man, pops in. Oh, no jumping and gunning, unfortunately, unless you're using the right click from the pistol. Gets punished. That's three. But they will get down the KO. So ultimate stop 2v2. They can't get the res off as to where they're positioned. Especially because, especially where the where the KO is, there's two left on the outside. Double entry and one against two now. Using the res as the bait. They know what Capri Sun is. There's hiding. He can just swing for the spike. He doesn't have to swing and decides to do so anyways. A beautiful play there coming from Capri Sun again. They literally dangled their teammate as live bait. You gotta love that. Look at Capri Sun right now going absolutely battle sage. 15 and 10, leading the charge here for Seek, out fragging even Bean Salad Man, the duelist coming from Seek, and just having an absolute day so far. But with that being said, still has not been enough to close the gap. Still 8 and 4 going into the second half in favor of JT Williams. This all start in 8-4 is not too bad as well, especially if you're looking at Icebox scores. Fnatic came back from 11-3, so this is uh, this can get a lot worse, if anything. And right now, JT Williams up. Up on the attack, a pistol they're looking for to see if they can make their attacking round a bit more favorable for themselves. And what one goes down right away. Seek with a nice start off to see one up top. Should be able to take it. There we go. That's on tracker. They got to get past the wall and I'll look for other options. Also got to give a quick shout out to production. Thank you again for giving us the purple outlines. It makes everything just so much nicer. I love it uh, without a doubt. But now as we are moving in, you can see JT Williams currently in a 3v3 as they do lose spike. And that is going to be tough given where the spike location is. I thought they were rotating. They're all going on the outside. They saw nobody on the flank, so they could have been able to move over. But... It's then now with that drop right in the middle, they get spotted with the dart. Nobody shoots it. And they give away all their positions, but instead they'll instead you take the fight. See? Not stuck outside. The right click connects as a 3v1 somehow. Seek. Give away all their advantages and they recover the spike as a one more left. And now it's on the Sova. To get the final two. And gets them almost Astral there. And Astral connects. 
All right. big clutch. So Astral is just cracked. I mean, if anything, they're cracked right. with the ghost. Like, that's literally all they had. It's not like it was like an ultimate frag out round. It was literally just a pistol round. And yet they managed to just get the head clicks back to back to back. And come away with not only a four piece, but the clutch dub for Seek. One that they really needed going into the second half. And mm -hmm. uh, they that that could be the spark that Seek needs to try and equalize against JT Williams. Really impressive stuff, yeah. And overall, just how they managed to see how they actually managed to get that back because with a bonus on defense for Icebox, this should be an eight six right away as well. So right from here, we're thinking that yo, Seek, I definitely have a chance to get back in this game pretty easily. Because now JT Williams has a really tough task of hoping if they can see hoping to see if they can get on site or not. Well, let's see how JT Williams goes about this round. Again, the buying power going all in favor of Seek here. Although they didn't really flex it that much. They didn't go for a full buy. You know, they were able to buy up, get themselves a Marshall. I think maybe a Spectre somewhere in there. But it, they didn't, you know, go through with the power of the purse. You know, they just kind of, you know, just bought up a little. As you can see, Tracker now working their way through mid. And the spike still lingering there towards B. The peak comes out. And Tracker nearly eliminated there off the rip. A decent amount of damage, but still with nobody gone, the Seek has the advantage on the defense, rotating everybody over to B instead. Hmm. Interesting call where they just pull two back right away, still kind of chilling around mid, but it was not much control. The past yellow they go to get found out immediately and then leave them hmm, with their backs against one. So Spike should go down here with the wall still up. Yeah, the only problem is that that ice wall isn't far enough for it to get the spike on site. It's just a little bit too close there. So it's going to block them from planning. And now you can see the remainder of the eliminations will follow through. As finally, Tracker will be gunned down. And Seek will be that much closer to equalizing against JT Williams. Let's do this. Really impressive. And actually, this is what we were expecting to happen. And with two gone, though, it's kind of the most you can expect in terms of an actual save round. JT Williams has his opportunity to not try to bring things back with guns in their hand. It is the natural momentum shift of, of a lot of Valorant games that, you know, we go back and forth and back and forth. Either way, though, uh, A, I find would be the most probable option, especially with how they're set up. I have not seen a mid push yet from them. Nope, not yet, and it doesn't look like they're going to try it either here in round number 15. As you can see, Sai Sheep able to throw out the Viper Well, sets their lineup pretty nicely. Going to give their team an advantage here to try and move in on site. Definitely going to be blocking Snowman, no, not going to be a view from there. And this time we get the Ice Wall right. They do take a little damage, but they should be able to heal that up just nicely. Harvest free available for JT Williams if they wanted to use that for the post plant. So it's playing pretty far up front. Around the close angles, it's one traded again. Astral comes out on top. Now with three more there, the Harvest continue to, to delay back and forth. Only seeing one, but now she realize the presence of all three of them covering the exact same angles. Pass Ness, they go. Sage with the wall up too, so just stuck behind the cover and that was a very good shot by Nate. Was that just a blind fire or was there some additional yes. intel that I didn't notice? Like, was there a Sova dart? How did they know they were? It had to be the Sova dart, right? In order to, to kind of like give them I assume so. Yeah, yeah. the indicator behind that green wall because I, 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 you blink and then you missed it. Yeah, it was insane how they just managed to like surprise, okay, based on the trajectory of the silver dart where they were before i'll just guess this is where you are now and knowing that where the flash actually did come from is one choice or the other either way even if you look at uh the, the results though this is what we were expecting right at williams now nine to six i still have pretty much all, almost all their guns still in their side 
And you know, I want to say this is somewhat what I expected, but at the same time, it's not because Seek was making some decent improvements on the offensive side of the spike, and now they have the luxury or the comfort, rather, of being on the defensive side of the spike on a defensive sided map. So I was expecting a little bit more of a pushback here in the second half from Seek, but so far here in round number 17, it's not looking good. Not looking good for Seek. Mm -hmm. Stuff call. Should we be able to buy up going into the next round if need be? As of right now, still 9 to 6, as you're saying. Hunter's Fury put out. And Spike does get stopped. And Spike yeah, they even find, manage to find a Sage in the corner. So now they need to see a way how they can shoot the plant before getting checked. And they got checked. Yeah. Ash moves around. Great timing by them. It's 40 standing. seconds. Enemy they might not even need it. It's a save round by the end. Hayes thing has to plant somehow. Well, here we go. This is the rebuttal that I wanted to see from Seek. You know, they're on the defensive side. Ooh. They have great opportunity, and they make great execution. It will be Capri Sun once again going Battle Sage mode for Seek and able to pull out a win, putting Seek now just down two rounds from JT Williams. Unfortunate. Just that's by the end of it where they got caught out, weren't looking at the right angle, and then giving away catching control as well. And now from here, I'm sorry, I just saw Hero um, cover the entire stage. He does that? Yeah, I, that was the first time I've actually ever seen that. And it was enough to confirm as well. That took the first stock off of Peach. But you know what? That might just be the power of the RNG. That is wild. He just has a giant AoE like a super, but he's just a little character. Okay, cool. Sure. Anyways. Seek's still making this a two... Round a game. We saw the silver early on by the emphasis of B. I've not gone A in a couple of rounds as well. They have, and then I'll come out if they wanted to use that to rush into it, though. Well, here we go. You can see the spike now making its way over towards the B site, which is where JT Williams have found some success. Although this is where Seek have won their last round as well. As you can see, the KO dagger goes out, able to pick up one. Now looking to get the read here. Shot dart doesn't connect. You got one up in heaven and the quick work of Hey Snape. Able to get the head click on one as yet another will be eliminated. And JT Williams with a quick swing is able to get a 4v2 advantage. A 4v2 post plan, which should go in the way of us right now for JT Williams as they do have the pretty much all the option for themselves to make sure the Seek doesn't have a way back in. Seek now playing two apart, one around Kitchen, one going towards Snowman. Trying to get a peek off here, maybe get a pick, maybe there are options, but getting exits and saving would be definitely be the safer play. Instead, they're still going to try to go around. They're in front of the smoke in terms of Sage. It looks like the rain is so far, and also the Sage was spotted because of turret. And where they say run out of time, but Capri Sun still gets one. Yeah, nothing wrong with a little exit frag as long as you can get away. And you can see Capri Sun definitely turned tail and headed for the hills there. They were able to get their exit frag and get a little bit of monies on the side and all with without giving any monies away. You know, if they were able to just jump in and then get gunned down, they would have given some economy away as well. So not that much of, I guess, a loss. They still lose the round, but at least they have a little chunk of change going out. Not bad. And now they got all the options in the world if they wanted to re up and fight again. I have the judge on Night Raven, though, which is fun. I saw that previously. And they used that to push all the way up, which is <laughs> pretty fun. And instead, this time, playing around the corner and you're spawned by A, which I don't think anybody's going to try to check. They're going to use that. They're instead going to run it back onto B. Our three people there, knock command put out early. Spike alongside them, and it should be just the safe wall plant. Yeah, and this KO ult is huge. Again, it makes taking well, sight so easy. And they're going to top it off with the Viper's Pit, so that way they can keep sight. What a combination of ults they are coming from JT Williams. Still a lot of options for two of them. 4v4, spray through the smoke with the Viper's Pit. Should do enough to deter them from just running in. 
But what matters right now is time. It's time. That's all that's left. And time they currently do not have. Plus with that snake bite as well should delay them even more with one more left. They're all on the offensive, running away. And as the spike continues to tick down, that'll do it, unfortunately. Some of the players there, including Sai Sheep, don't make it out of the blast, but it's all right for JT Williams. They will take the dub, what and now Seek have got to try and pull somewhat of a... I don't want to say a miracle, but they got to make some magic happen here if they're going to try and stay in this match. JT Williams, only one more round went away from being on match point, and they have the economy to do it. I'm thinking Seek right now has both the Empress and alongside the Deal on Thunder. So they could just try to go completely on the offensive and just push them back in a spawn. The Breach is still playing with just shotguns though, which I am very curious about why. Because that is a death. No way. <laughs> okay. All right. My brain stopped work. Cap, you turn. <laughs> I mean, is hey, it's winnable. Still winnable for Seek right now. They are playing fairly well. Again, I'm not sure how the wall nade managed to land either. But with that being said, I think, uh, again, this is somewhat of a, of a forced buy, if not a save round for Seek. They did not have a lot to work with, which is why we saw the, the breach on the Bucky. And, you know, sometimes you get lucky with the Bucky, and that's what it looked like uh, kind of happened there. But you can see JT Williams now in full swing looking to commit over towards this ace site and Seek following in turn with this rotation, although Sage for Seek still all the way back over towards B. See, I would believe that logic if we didn't also have the, the judge last round. So... This is, I believe, Spike their strategy, eight. but Astro left. once again stops the path from going down. There's the Empress now up. Dry peeking. Left. This is a rough call. And for that, they'll all get taken down. That was like one today, buy away from being a thrifty. Like, ways. Seek really went into that with somewhat of the bottom of the bargain bin there, just making a lot happen yeah. with a little. It wasn't, it didn't qualify for a thrifty, clearly, but you know what? In my eyes, I'll, I'll call it a thrifty. I've been at the thrift shop, okay? I know what it's like mm -hmm. to have to go with, you know, what you can afford. And I feel like Seek definitely made a lot happen with just the bargain bin of an arsenal and now have put themselves that much closer of trying to make this comeback happen. Actually, I believe that game we just saw in Haven was almost done as well. Revealing I think that was like 12 4 that was there, I believe. Not sure. Either way, though. Found them. It'll, it'll leave us now to think instead about JT Williams and Seek. Take flight. War. Uh, you should now, run. Pondering on what their next decision could be for themselves as one still gets traded. Icebox. And you can see the spike now finally getting ready to go down. But no, they get knocked off of sight only momentarily. The ice wall is now gone, and now the trades are coming in. Haste Nate over towards yellow by their lonesome for the moment. Does get revealed by the Sova Dart. And I think the alt res just comes in a little bit too late. As it does not look good for JT Williams. And now only the lone KJ remains. They right used there. the wall to cover for themselves. They stopped the plant and, they and the advantage comes up. All JT Williams spike. Not with them either. And Mask gets a one. It's a 1v2. One. And he clutches it. They check him. Match wow. What a round coming from JT Williams. For what a moment it seemed as though that they had their backs up against the wall and it was all done. But no. It was the side of JT Williams to come through and get the clutch dub. Thanks to Mass, who was able to hang on even in dire straits, having the player advantage against them and still managed to come in big for JT Williams. And now will put their team on match point. He was stuffing themselves too. And I believe the our, our Haven map as well is somewhat nearing that end too. That was a nice clutch by the Killjoy. So... That's two Killjoy clutches in a row for two sides. Especially on the attacking cap as well. Impressive. Seek still more tools available in their arsenal. Yep, and here comes Haste Nate. Click quopping all out through that upper area. 
letting Seek know exactly where they are, but I think that's what Haste Nate wants. Haste Nate trying to bait out some type of peek here, but no. Seek gonna play very conservative, very defensively, and not give any shoulder peeks or head clicks away for free. Is now, you can see Haste Nate is gonna take to the ground and try and make their way up into A site. A smart call because we've seen the JT Williams. Uh... Does like, does, like, does like to take advantage of just everybody looking to push aggressively against them, especially with the Sage playing on the lower angle. So they get the high low going off themselves. And for now, they're looking for a way in. Considering the options they have, they decide that maybe a bit too many people here. I would say it might be a bit more optimal. Mouse has made their way so left. far into the site. No, C1! No, no. That's so gone. And that was just a huge lurk right there coming from Mass. Again, the clutch player from the previous round now opening the way here for Seek on towards the B site. They should have literally no opposition now. And this should be a free spike plant for Seek as they do get the bomb, the spike down. I'm sorry, JT Williams able to get the, the spike down. And that was huge. As you can see, the Viper's Pit now going out on the B site as well. Gonna use that at least for the entry, but the issue becomes that they're still on gonna be on top of their own smokes, uh, on the top of the enemy smoke, I should say, and with the molly there as well. So that should dwindle them down very quickly. Tough goings, but we'll have to just peek past the wall and look to go in however they can, but they're in an open angle, they have no cover for themselves. I was a sage around, but they turned a bit too slowly. Forward. It'll make it the game. We move forward. Yeah, that was just somewhat of a feels bad because you saw the Viper's Pit, unfortunately, did not cover the spike. And the spike was just barely sticking out. Uh, so they did not have the benefit of the Viper's Pit when trying to defuse. And not only that, but there was also the Hunter's Fury there and waiting. So it was really stacked against them. But we are moving on now to Mallet Creek versus Myers Park. 10 to 10 here on Haven and things are getting spicy. Empress out, one already taken away, as was the wingman. And they see the ult up front and center there running at them. Cutting off any sort of flanks as well, but kneel before me, catch them on the rotates. And you can see already that the spike is making its way towards Garage Mallet Creek down in this 3v4 scenario. Out goes the Nano Swarm. Not going to be able to connect, but it does buy Myers Park a little time to rotate, as it will be yet another elimination. And a decent, somewhat decent trade, unfortunately, though. You can see Zach Rom will be gunned down there in Garage, but the spike does go down. And now Mallet Creek has an opportunity here in a 1v2. Now a 1v1 with the lockdown out as well. Huge, and plus with the Mollies also now there. They can, just, they can just play complete post plant. Power has done this before. We saw it in a small pip up that that did come through exactly how it all played out. And now the turret, I was watching the back of the site. They know where's edge again from. That being, you know, a link, C link, I should say. And whenever the tap does come in, it should be one molly after the next, but one does get shot out, and that's the delay there. They know they have to check him first the time. Might not be enough. And so it's on. Yep. Cannot get to it. Yeah, but that's all you really need to do there. You don't have to get the frag. You just have to run the time off the spike. So a successful round coming from Mallard Creek as they are able to get that one round win now over Myers Park as we get ready to head into round number 22. Is it Ridley versus a cloud? And the Ridley is winning. Almost setting up for a three stock too. I don't know how many Ridley players there are, but I'm impressed. I get it, but again, this is just somewhat detrimental, uh, I guess, to the Cloud community, because again, I have come under much scrutiny by saying that Cloud isn't the best sortie. I'm sorry, I have yet to see the evidence, I have yet to see the win percentage, and right now, at it's least- It's Regardless, I, I, I've caught strays from the Cloud community, as a Cloud mm. fan myself. But I'm sorry, right now, in recent games and tournaments, Cloud has not been oh. that high in win percentage. I respected trying to go for the dunk, but nonetheless, for now, Myers Park have to enter the site down one person. That's only the, from the shadows available from their side. So 
It lose one, it rotate immediately. We saw the strap for them previously. Making a lot of noise while doing so. And so and so the double back is definitely possible, but it'll pull only rotates. And I really do like the slow rotation coming out from Mallard Creek. This is what they used the first time, of course, to get the spike down on to that C site in the previous round. But this time they're just kind of stalling out and maybe even trying to go for a fake rotate. But with the way Myers Park is set up defensively, it doesn't matter if they fake the rotation or not. They are still set up as exactly the same and show no inkling of trying to rotate. They're just going to hold their ground here as once again, Myers Park is going to make an attempt on the A site. Flash out. No time left at all. They're going to have to force their way in. But it's already going down. They're stuck in the chokes. And right now, they have to plant blind. They actually do get it. A nice paranoia. Because it's 2v4 from Mallard Creek. Who've secured a post plant some way, somehow. But they'll be checked one after the next. And Myers Park went four. All they got to do is play one on and two to go in and check them one by one. But... Instead, they get sprayed. Sekrom gets three by the end, setting himself up for the ace. Wingman defusing it, getting it to half. And they've got to do something here. They've got to at least look to check the first, and they got to just defuse. It's still, at, yeah, it's still at half. I mean, I don't think they have enough time. They're going to go for it. But look, the spike too far gone. How? That was an insanely clutch round. Like... All power to power. Fantastic round. Way to keep them busy and run the time off the clock. But how, just how, does Zachrom get those two head clicks back to back? It was a spray, but they still landed. How does that happen? I honestly don't know. I do not know how Zachrom managed to get three there by the end. And two just going back and forth with the Vandal, nonetheless. Ridiculous across the board. And the last that'll leave us now with a match point for Mallow Creek versus Myers Park. I really don't know what else to say except that we take those. And Mallet Creek, they're going to take that. You know, they put themselves onto match point. Now heading into round number 23, looking to end things here and now. And you can see they do have a focus over towards C. They push garage, but it will be finite to get the first frag here and in the favor of Myers Park. Right there. We'll see how things shape out for themselves. I believe we might have, we might have played DC here, but we're already in about halfway through the round. Mallard Creek is down for a 4v5. And I got to play this out, I believe with this, they got to unfortunately play off site. And this might be Myers Park's round to win. Because Mallard Creek seems a bit lost. Yeah, I mean, we just saw a deep flank there coming from Mallard Creek but uh, uh, with their breach, but they got pointed out so quickly. They they just had to swing onto the seaside. Left. They would have got an easy read, but, you know, they, again, just decided to try and go B, and then the audio cue gave them away. So a deep flank that could have paid off. Now null and void, as you can see, power on the A site. Does get the spike down, and is trying to get out of dodge. Manages to get the nades out, but it's going to be a 2v5 scenario here going against Mallard. We have been here before, crucially, so. We've talked about this, and it was Zekron last time to get so many. That's just one take, and chooses to face check into a post plan opportunity. I believe they did shoot out all uh, uh, powers utility, though, so. Unfortunate. But it'll leave us in a situation where Mallow Creek... Looking at all five up for themselves. I believe they called in a tech pause here. Yeah, and again, you had mentioned that there might have been a disconnect. Maybe a player yeah. is AFK. You know, there's usually something that goes awry. And as a matter of fact, you know, I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it, that if you don't have at least one technical difficulty in your event, it won't be any good. So in the meanwhile, we're going to head over to some more Smash action where the Sorties will once again try and take on Ridley as now Byleth comes out to play. One sword is already gone, and I believe we have a different commentator friend for this one instead. But surprising results. I haven't seen many people play Ridley at all, but 
Using but this hitbox just seems so big. It seems like unfair fighting as Ridley. You see, you would think that, but the thing with Ridley is that, you know, they have the, the craziest recovery, and I say that as they literally fall to their own devices. But I Ridley, don't believe you. <laughs> no, Ridley really does. Ridley really does have one of the best recoveries for a heavy, and they are a very unique character. I'm not a fan. Personally, I think they're gross to look at, but it's like... For a heavy? I feel like Rob is a better recovery. Rob's not a heavy. Even... Rob's a heavy. Rob's not a heavy. Rob is such a Rob bro. is is a mid. Mm, you're mid. I am uh, mid. But, <laughs> but okay, but even if we, even if we exclude Rob, look, Bowser's recovery is better. He no, goes higher. It is not. DK goes higher. In fact, no, not even King K rule flies. <laughs> Ridley flies. But 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 really does it fly higher than King K rule though? They could literally fly. I don't know what is happening with this Ridley. They're they're ruining my argument. Ridley can definitely fly and has extensive recovery. We're just not seeing it right now for whatever reason. But Ridley does have a really extensive recovery and can fly very high. Can actually traverse underneath the stage and come back around from the other side. Mm, I've yet to see it, so I don't believe you. It's not my fault. I'm blaming Punisher for this one. Yeah, because so far Punisher has kind of just fallen off, literally, twice in fact. Yeah, they gave away two stocks, and I, and, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's a feels bad for sure. Yeah. But hey, if uh, if anything, it's still a one star game, and it managed to pull it back pretty quickly. So impressive, nonetheless. Well, let's see if this Byleth pick could be the Achilles heel of Ridley. Keep in mind, Ridley was able to make short work of Cloud in the previous match. And now it is pretty even going back towards center stage. And now Byleth forced off stage and barely is able to recover thanks to that chain whip there. Oh my goodness. How far does that go? That was that was actually lower than most than, 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 than some recoveries. That's higher than the, the little max recovery point, in fact. Hold it down Which is which is crazy to me, but either way. No, It'll be a lot of damage yeah, given no. over. Ridley, okay, somehow recovers this time, but I don't know if that trend will continue. I'm telling you, Ridley has decent recovery. It was just the execution wasn't there. Meanwhile, you can see the execution coming from Byleth, and it is rather impressive going all the way off stage, able to recover yet again, and we're going back to platforms here. As you can see, Byleth does get the up and over Ridley back to center stage. Can't oh, connect with the Lance, and now Ridley putting Byleth on their back foot. Oh, wow, he only did one also, them at kill range, too. One decent hit would do it for either side. The spear definitely is what, is what we're looking at. For Byleth to bring out, to just look to connect, especially by the tip, and there we go. There's that, but not able to get it. Ridley still doing enough, delaying things again and again. Oh, and the recovery doesn't happen. Yeah, they tried to break the whip out again, but it doesn't reach that time. There is a finite amount, and Ridley putting two sorties in the dirt back to back. As it looks like we do have our Valorant matchup back up here. Mallard Creek still on match point. Myers Park looking to equalize. And I believe, yeah, this is all their players now in here once again. Mallard Creek with not so stellar weapons. But leave them with an opportunity at least to, to close out this game. Sending out Wingman a little early there. Not much doing. Doesn't connect with anyone. And now you can see Jay Gamer. Gonna throw out the blind. Throws it up high. Dizzy able to connect with Amexity. What? They're right in front. Dodging in front of them. I don't know how they actually missed that. Were they using a stinger? No. That was a vandal, my friend. Okay. But there's two players detained. Actually, on the side of Myers Park, they're not going to check them, but Spike still has not gone down yet. Taking a lot of time to do all this, but 3v5. Very winnable. You know, Mallet Creek definitely not out of this yet, especially when they have sight lines over there towards, uh, towards A main. But Jay Gamer kind of stuck in a detrimental position as they get gunned down by Neil before me. Now Power has to force the flank here as yet another KJ lockdown comes out and Nightfall goes out as well. It is literally an ult spree and now it is this shooting frenzy coming from Power who finds one but can't find the other and now Zekrom, the lone clutch, has to make a miracle happen yet again as the spike continues to be diffused. They 
they get it, no, and awesome. they get the ASAP ROM once again makes a miracle happen for Mallard Creek. And I did not think the camera was going to come back to me in mid fist pump. Wow. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. That shouldn't have happened. He was blind firing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh like and then the recoil of the vandal is we this is why it was so interesting because kj was in the cover of the smoke and the spike was there it was in and they and kj was kind of set off to the right of the spike whereas the shots coming from zach rom were on the spike and then the recoil kind of went up into the kj so I don't know if it was calculated. I don't know how you want to call that, but I just call it Zach Rom once again doing Zach Rom things, coming in clutch two times now, pulling off these miracle, not even pulling off these miracle spike plants and being able to hold it. Absolutely insane. I am flabbergasted. So let's cut it to a break and we'll be back.
Discord got the most hits, and it makes sense to go back to him, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look like he's enough hits. That did a lot of damage. They hit him with the spike, and they just hit him that wrong. Hello, everybody. Welcome on back. What's up? Hey, I'm Ravish. That's Cap. We have Valor, and that's that. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> was I supposed to follow that up with my own little I don't know. Pack? I'll be honest. That was kind of just it. Okay. Uh, I, All right. I, I couldn't think of any of the rhymes to go with it. Uh, but now, now we're here. Producer Dap has left screen because they, they refuse to switch. Why? Well, it's still going on right now, though, which is amazing amazing to me why though cat are you well <laughs> am i am i well i would i would think so you know i don't i don't feel ill so i i would hope that i'm well <laughs> uh I'll, I'll let you know at my next checkup how it goes whether or not i'm well but regardless i am feeling well and i'm feeling swell because we still have some more matches to go through not only do we have valorant but of course we got some more smash action to go we've already seen some great games being played and still just 
kind of enjoying some of the highlights that we have seen already. I mean, earlier on, we got to see an absolutely insane clutch moment from Zarkov. Oh, I forget their name. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it was the fade Zekron. that just came in. Um, Zakron. Zakron, yeah, yeah, Zach yeah. Just absolutely insane. And then, again, this push coming from power. Just buying as much time as they possibly could. Throwing all caution to the wind and Zekron coming in clutch here. This is the second time they managed to pull off a miracle. Time continuing to take away and somehow, some way, the spray lands through the smoke. And they get the ace on top to get the win. Just absolutely unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, wild that the wild that that actually did end up happening by the end of it. Last couple of seconds, too ridiculous. How uh, things went down, but uh, experience a lot more of all that as uh, we look to get into our next game as well of Smash Bros. All right. Uh, yep, things uh, looking good for King Dedede right now. Toasty! As you can see, they do have a 200% damage lead on the last stock here. And I think this one could be safe to call. Uh, I mean, I don't really see King Bean coming out of this one right now. Toasty just kind of playing with their food at the moment. Uh, waiting to land, I guess, the last hit here. And we are just going to float right on back to center stage. And there you go. The up smash will land. And Toasty will be able to walk away with the dub. Bada bing, bada boom, there we go. Off they are. KD comes out on top. As a, now in for Mallory Creek. It's Myers Park. All right. 2 0 star, Mallory Creek. Yeah, this looks oddly familiar, actually. Yes. Getting a little deja vu. <laughs> what is uh... to <laughs> Ravish, what's today? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I believe it's a Friday, my good sir. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, there we go. Yeah. That looks a little better. East Mac versus Providence. That seems more right. I'm like, didn't we see this? Is it? Is it suddenly 30 minutes ago? <laughs> well, there you have it. Now we have the correct overlays. It is, in fact, East Mac going up against Providence. East Mac currently with a 2 to nil lead. Now going into the bonus round, an opportunity for Providence to try and get a win on the board as they do get the first Alim. Koss able to come in big and get that first elimination in the favor of Providence. Early push up, match to the aggressive end. Now with that, getting the punish here to all the things you want to see right now for the side of Providence with their gun round as well. CC left completely open. They do have some util there being just the molly. Vipers around the corner does get started out. So that smoke now there to cover both their entrances and it will be a 4v5 retake. Yep, that it will. And you can already see that the spike is going to be going down. The snake bite not going to be enough to confirm the elimination. East Mech now oh. having to go for this retake, and it will be a Sakae. They're lurking in the garage to get that elimination, and it's going to be even that much more difficult for East Mech now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate how that all went down. 3v1 by the end, they had the garage on lockdown. So like you're saying, that being the crucial point where they, uh, you know, you. make sure that no space was the, was able to be taken back by Smek. Now it's one person left. I imagine they'll be looking to just go fall to the spike, but instead of getting caught on the flank, looking for exits. It's a team ace by the end. You see? There's still plenty of yep, fun. That it is, and a fantastic round coming from Providence, being able to make the most out of the bonus and deny the bonus to East Mech, using their full buy to its fullest potential. And now we'll get their first win on the board here on Haven. I like it. I feel like Haven's a uh, decently uh, well thought out map. I know like a lot of people just have come to grow tired of it, not be the biggest fans of it, but I feel like in general this... It's developed pretty solidly. As uh, on the other end, though, that is our other map going on right now at 12 to 5. Almost looks to be wrapped up here between Huff. But right now, for East Mech and Providence, we are in early stages. And the classic back and forth continues with East Mech now, a buy on their hands. And now this is the rifle round. This is where things start to get interesting, and we get to see who will set the tone going forward for at least the first half. The first half of Haven. Providence able to get a big win in the last round, and now East Mac will have their first full buy. Rifles and shields all around. 
And you can see the spike still kind of lingering over towards C. Again, wondering if they're going to try and go for a deep fake here. But it doesn't look like East Mac is buying it. Well, if they're not buying, then I'm not selling. Blocking vision. Obscuring vision. I don't know where else they're going. But five walk up through C. They do all get stopped and delayed. And one gets caught but push up through garage actually works out for themselves so stopping the flank and now with three stacked up near b we'll see how east mech looks to come back into this be a one for one now with four just there all of providence is centered around the site and you see this is actually an interesting setup for providence you know playing for post plant here is because they're all on site you don't have any watching the long lanes and they are really kind of victim to utility right now if they did decide to try and util dump onto site. But finally, you can see you have two making their way back over towards Cubby. Cass does come out and get the pick. And now it's a 2v2. One enemy remaining. Right at a 1v2 by the end. East Mech now just left of the outside. One delay. Bubble gets one. What do you got a time? Not a half. And Cass gets the final. Yeah, that they do. And it was a little scrappy, too. I'll, I'm going to be completely uh, frank with you here. That was a little messy, to say the least, for Providence. But they still come through to get the dub and tie us back up at two to piece. And they get a little chunk of change for their efforts as well, putting East Mac on a save round. Hmm. As meanwhile, the other end, uh, it was the villager. I was, it, it was the me fighter to take the game over the villager, in fact. So, nice little change up on the other end i played against a villager not too long ago and boy was it annoying so i have small bias on my end nonetheless providence now in the four stack i should say five with three to two split towards a yeah, and it looks like this is where the commitment is going to be you can see all of providence trying to make their way onto site right now but look at this Polo able to come in with two back-to-back -back head clicks with the sheriff. Oh my word! One, but cast moving up. Nice trade. Let's be one on cat with the ghost, nonetheless, making a three v one. East Mac keeping things even at least, even when the buys aren't too favorable. Just out fragging the other side. A thrifty take. That was a huge thrifty round, it's especially considering there at the end that it was a classic V Vandal and the classic one. <laughs> Absolutely insane. And then Polo also being able to get that two piece back to back. Now getting East Mech, uh another full buy here. And now the shoes on the other foot in Providence is going to have to reach into the bargain bin to try and make something work. You got to find something big deep, my friend, because now for them on the attack with a save is the least ideal thing you can have because at least the defense you can flank around you can hold long angles so you can just you know, look look to just get one with a shorty but here slow walking through garage prodding around to see if they can find anybody close i have a smoke inside there too so at least shouldn't be spotted by the molly but hmm, i do wonder actually no sorry i was gonna say that is the alarm bot there on top of the molly so block correction I think that is actually an interesting Viper's Pit, just because they set it to where there's two lanes that they have to watch. So they still have to actively look through the, both of those lanes to make sure no one is in the Viper's Pit. Also, <laughs> it's a save round for Providence. So maybe the Viper's Pit wasn't necessary, but at the same time, you just pulled off a Thrifty. So you want to make sure the same doesn't happen to you. Mm-hmm, naturally so. And there comes in the two-lane strategy that you were talking about, because now Cask is trying to instead to go through sewers but has no idea as to where cat might be as they can for fourth but sneak through way in this seat instead oh. gonna move around find one onto a if they possibly can and they know they're gonna have to rotate as well the spike is down on b the rest of the members all get taken out it's cast going a long way through a and not getting spotted by the viper is insane and you see cast lone player for providence able to get at least one elimination does Ooh. find the other do they have enough time yes they do but they don't have the spike that is a feels bad but at least they can get a couple of exit frags and find some mm -hmm. uh some monies there at the end yeah it's 
quick like your sink, exactly like your sink. It's uh slow works out, and that is still uh at least e economical damage done over at East Mech by the end of it. So and the, you you see you see that be being reflected as well. That their eco isn't bad, but if they keep having rounds like that, it'll just come down to them not being able to buy either full utila or harvey go light shields. Nonetheless, for now, two round lead for East Mech. Yeah, and like you said, it's still a pretty solid buy. Um, the only thing from Providence that they are short on is that half shield. Should still be a solid round nonetheless. East Mac currently playing pretty well on the def defensive side. But also keep in mind, Haven is a defensive-sided map. Eh, I feel like it's a decent attacker side, I feel like, no? Ah, you see, down. that's why it's it's an interesting map because in terms of win percentage, it is slightly skewed to the attacker side. I mean, I'm sorry, to the defender side. Mm, it's like it's like it's literally at like a 52-48 split, but slightly favored to yeah. the defense. You want to fight that was it. unlucky from CK that they couldn't shoot out the haunt so they get so they get the information on everybody there. And then put up the wall, but locked out in retribution. So a lot of tools being dumped on the A side by the side of Providence. Just to just get this plant down, essentially. And with no one locked down, they now all come in. They see one up top by heaven. But the rest of the members of Providence on the center of the site. Rolling Thunder used to look to enter. That's one more found CK looking for a contact. That's one taken away. Two up by heaven. Providence on the outside. That's the cleanup. I was really hoping CK was going to be able to get that floor bang. That would have been great. Just firing up from on hell and then get the elimination. But it's okay. They didn't have to. They had the rest of their team there to solidify that final elimination. And now give Providence their third win here on Haven. Really impressive stuff with the like you're saying. But it'll make it that much more interesting for... Providence says, you know, one run away here once again as the back and forth the rounds go. Both sides still once again have a buy. As Providence used most of their ults last round, maybe this time things might get tougher. Never mind. That's just one so quickly. is spotted, but they're still on sight. And they're going to waste no time here getting that up, that spike down. And you can see CK here in Garage trying to get a couple of wall bangs, but none going. As they're just going to hold Garage for the moment. Spike continuing to tick away now. And Providence off to a fantastic start here in round eight. Still stuck in the corner. Brizzo there. Oh, that is really tough. Going to leave them all stuck on the outside. Providence making it four to four. Just clean firing. And that was some all gas, no breaks, no hesitation offense coming from Providence being able to equalize now for a piece and forcing East Mech to go with somewhat of a force buy. It looks like they're going to force it. Maybe still undecided as we do see at least one phantom, one full shield and enough money, you know, to try and make something work here. But regardless, it is going to be somewhat of a half buy now. As you can see, they're going to be buying down, trying to save a little bit more of that economy. There. But on the side of Providence, they got some extra credits to work with here, and they have themselves a full buy. Four before. Four before, I should say. In a 4 for situation, a slowdown on the aggression, but Bot coming back. that's all where that stands. They can run back to C once more, as East back again has given up the entire side. And that's actually really interesting because normally you have at least one anchor, especially the KJ in that scenario, um, pretty much being the lone defender for C, but they did completely abandon it. And now they look to check their corners and the KJ is picked out of garage. As you can see, it is a full push now from Providence once again onto the C site. So the 4v5 though, Providence watching the cast is doing the most right now for the team as both the initiated and just holding it as an anchor at the end too watching one clear angle east mac continues to walk into their sidelines over and over and now you can see eaton joyer does peek in garage and does find one 
And now it's going to be a 3v1 scenario for the Lone Breach, who now cuts it down to a 1v2. It's doable, it's winnable, but this is still going to be a tough retake here. Uh, Hansei in Cubby is able to at least deter with the Nano Swarm, and it does work out. They are not going to be able to recover. No spike defuse here. It will be Providence taking yet another round win. And they've continued, like, after, after they don't, they did lose just the first three as well. It's been almost, yeah, almost five in a row for themselves with the back and forth starting, and I believe uh, they've realized this, and it's Providence, in fact, taking the timeout. Interesting. Yep, no bad time for a timeout. I think whether you're winning or losing, it's always good to use your timeouts, and you should never let them, you know, go to waste. But with that being said, we are now heading into some more Smash action, and we have Ganondorf versus Pokemon Trainer. Hmm, I see it. Uh, uh, just a wide variety of Pokemon with a small, a medium, and a big boy, and Ganon, who is the biggest boy. And also, now enough the newest game as well. And you know what? It was actually really interesting because at my time at the Battle for the South Land uh, for Smash, they actually was running a Ganondorf bracket on the side just for fun, and Peanut mm -hmm. ended up coming out on top as the number one Ganon. Hey, how about that? I actually don't know a ton about Peanut, but... Uh, either way, it'll leave now to the Ganon now being taken out, and Pokemon Trainer only up fifty percent by the end of the, the uh, by the end of, of the entire exchange. And you see, I think Pokemon Trainer is like an excellent counter to Ganon, not deliberately picked as like a counter pick, but at the same time, like their ability to just have so much variety, particularly on this Venusaur, you know, coming through with their zoning abilities again, being able to throw out the the Razor Leaf, etc., the vines really keeping ganon at bay keeping them spaced apart is really what gives the pokemon trainer an advantage here mm-hmm expecting so far you can already see it's currently in front of us as this small bit of damage going over but ganon has adapted the pace of the pokemon trainer completely ruining it all and making it so that pokemon was a strong start now it's not turning into an even tougher second stock yeah, especially with the switch to Charizard here. Do you want to go heavy versus heavy in this moment? I guess you do, as that Tail Whip is able to land to get the final stock elimination off of Ganondorf. And that round goes the Pokemon Trainer. But now, we're heading back to Valorant for East Mech versus Providence. Early spot. Castle gets the transfer. That's so sick. Early showstopper though, news to clear out one of the most common sight lines, but the hot spots won. And I leave them at 3v2. We take those. I really don't know what else to say. Koss came in and was able to get just a, a spray through the smoke and again connected. Nothing wrong with that. As you can see, it will be now a 2v3 retake for East Mech. And a pretty difficult one at that. Now the Viper slowly creeping in, trying to make their way on towards the A site. The haunt goes out, doesn't detect anyone. And now, only the Fade remains. And uh, that will be all that remains of the rest of East Mech as well, in fact. East Mech and Providence, both, I believe, 31 right now in terms of scoreboard. And both want to continue to raise their standings as we get, as we get into week five and six and forward. Taking, you know, just this two round lead. Look at a snowball it into a possible 8 4 half would definitely be the way to do it. As we look towards another round, a save for East Mech. And what's even more interesting is that this is a four round unanswered unanswered win the way that it it is currently looking i mean right now providence is just on an absolute uh winning spree so far here on haven as they managed to make an impressive comeback and now take the lead over east mac as you can see now the spike looks like it's gonna head finally towards mid Ooh. Five v five, still on site, and no big ultimate here. Though only the breach taking a bit of damage. But now from here, the one gets caught. It's two for pole. As you see, another up top is catching them all off guard. That's three taken away as he's coming in through the entrance. He's just giving them free picks. 
And those were some pretty big picks as well. And now Cass, once again, one of the lone players here for Providence, looking to peek out over here towards the side of B, but Yeet and Joyer is there to join them. And they get the final two frags and yet another round win Last for round Providence. A much, much needed, I was gonna say, well, actually, never mind. Providence, continue to show their dominance. <laughs> I misread that, but, uh, and the snowball has, has once again continued, but at least guns on the board. Furry smack, two big ultimates online in the blade storm and the lockdown as well. And they're one away from the rest of the ultimates too. In terms of the rest of Providence, only having the wall up, but some situation. One away from the lockdown and one from the rolling thunder. They can't try to play for the orb here if they want to. But there was the wall goes up for the viper. She is playing around it near the end. Yep, gets the viper wall out just a wee bit early. And you can see the Viper's Pit now coming out as well. So I, I think A is pretty locked down at this point. Mm -hmm. Abandon all hope, all ye who enter the Viper's Pit. Yeah, that's that's really tough. And Cass even gives away the indication that it's definitely not happening here. Maybe goes, you've got to force the road, so you've got to run all the way over. And he does this quite often, where they'll usually, you know, go past A, poke here, realize it's not an option. And you usually run to C, as that has been open quite often. But... See, this time has the fade round, so they can't enter for free like they used to. Well, you can see the push now making its way into B. One goes up Ooh. high, and Cass will be gunned down, but not without getting traded out. CK able to find that elimination as the spike to begins to be planted, and out goes the Cosmic Divide. CK, I was thinking like, there's no shot. You push past this wall, right? But they got to be careful as to where the rest of the members are. And Paul has found it. Goes all the way around. Nearby Bell. That's 2v3. As they have to look to delay. Doesn't look at the member there. You'd enjoy it if he gets the reload off too. Hansei's waiting around. Sees one more. Nice pickoff and coordination. But won't even need the lockdown. Providence with a beautiful post plan. Switching yeah, that side. was absolutely insane, and now they have themselves a pretty Everyone successful half. Now get a chance to try a little bit of defense as East Mac will now be on the attacker side. And they have a lot of ground to cover if they're going to want to try and make this comeback against Providence. Entirely so. The run they've been on too has been quite impressive. And Providence can't do. It all depends on the pistol round that is currently there with the second game going on to his other cusp right we're seeing a score can i get this over around i believe like can i get this five times there so and it's in, it's really spectacular to see this? the type of momentum that providence have they have now gotten six unanswered wins in a row against east mac east mac's gotta do something they gotta change something up here yeah. you know of that will be what and how and when? Questions right now, though. The one spot is seeing a couple taking a bunch of damage in terms of Utah, but should be it is to give up the sight. Face mech. Hmm. Yeah, not much doing here, especially in the early pistol round. Although we did see a lot of damage exchanged between both the KJs, and now it will be cast to get the first elimination for Providence. As you can see, Polo is able to find yet another, looking to get their second, and there it is, but they get gunned down in the crossfire, and now Providence only down to two. Polo has been on absolute tear for the past couple of rounds, They're getting the three there, too, just proves that. And that 2 2 situation once again, One Providence and East the Mac. Oh. No. no. Yeah, falling damage is a thing, by the way, for those that don't remember. There is, there is falling damage in Valorant. <laughs> Unfortunate, was hoping to see if he could possibly just, you know, uh, take the pick that it was get the drop down, but not gonna happen. And a must need a round for East Mech. And after, like you were saying, like six in a row, they couldn't get back. But here, Providence just give up the, just give up the sight and retake not as clean as their post plans. And this is exactly how you have to start things out if you're East Mac. You have got to get that win on the board because you were in a win drought. Now the drought is officially over. You've been able to really find a resurgence here, and they need to capitalize on it. They got the pistol round. Now they need to get the second round here in the second half if they really want to try and close this gap.
And it's that use a lot of useful as well alongside the dogs and the turret too, just to see where they're all staying. Pull finds one even catch the completely off guard. With the center that it, with the center that's there on B. Garage is open, C is open. They can all run through. If Kaz just find the timing on the rest of the members, this could be a big start, but yeah, doesn't manage to do it. Eeks out, gone. Yeah, these are just some really great reads coming from Eastmac right now. And they were able to really move successfully in unison, being able to rotate the spike and then not only just watch their front and their sides, but their back as well. And now they have the spike down on the C site as, as the spike continues to tick away. And now Providence have to try and make a miracle happen, but I don't know. Providence now down to their last player as they do get a nice little cheeky exit frag on the way out. Yeah, that's just going to be one by the end. You, you take two on a save, that's fine. And at least you just forced them off. They know a problem is going to die to the spike or at least one of the guns. I believe to the spikes, you're not giving any more alt points. I think that they're just going to hide until that happens. Yeah, and not to mention, you know, you don't necessarily have to save the classic. You can you can get away with, you know, going a guns a blazing and then, you know, kind of throwing that away. But it is going to be the round going to East Mac as now they have shrunk yeah. the gap to only two rounds now between them and Providence. Wow. Actually, a progression that we thought was going to happen. But from here, though, Providence with a chance to bring things back at least. Guns and blazing they got. And I wonder if to hold... In similar fashions, very far forward, or instead they will go for the full reading strategy once again. I don't believe right now we're still the far forward stretch. They want to challenge them. Well, this blade storm is going to give them all that they need to challenge. As you can see, East Mac going for the slow push here over towards A, but they're going to back off. Those nebulas force them to retrace their steps a little here. And make sure that they want to commit onto A. Bladestorm once again back out. As you can see, Polo tries to get a good sight on mid. Best sure I'm not finding much clothing close by B, but they use the Viper Wall instead to as cover that they're trying to fake towards C. The rotation is, I mean, does come out barely, but. They hear the indication, they give up a so quickly, a flash is nice, Polo takes one so quickly, but the hot does garner a lot of information, won't do them any good though. And that was a great entry coming from Polo, being able to smoke off uh, a lot of the, uh, I guess around the box there, so that way they could not get poked out when they tried to go for that push. And then of course, you know, you have the blade storm there and was able to just get an easy peek. And now speaking of an easy Ooh. peek, how about Cass getting one, but then instantly getting traded out? You know, if you can only watch one doorway, you might as well have another person there to watch the other. That way, no matter, yeah, no matter what, you're getting in a limb. I can't believe they actually held that too, because <laughs> it is unexpected, a cheeky play that works once in a while, but one that I've definitely paid off dividends here. And after Providence, they've got no time, they can't defuse. And they'll probably have to just die to the spike. Yes, they do. East Smack, three in a row. They get the bonus round here in the second half, and that is absolutely huge because now East Mac is going to get the full buy, and Providence knows it. They got to call a timeout. They got to talk it through because it is more than likely now that East Mac is going to be able to equalize eight to eight. Meanwhile, we're going to check in on Olympic and Audrey Kell, and as a reminder, Olympic, again, one of those top standing teams, but Audrey Kell still currently undefeated as they try and hold on to their streak here on Haven. Mm-hmm. Andrika, like you mentioned, yeah, they're four and zero as are Olympic. So very, very competitive one games for the two of them. Sagio finding one, going down to long. The seven to five half is finally taken for the side of Olympic. And you know, with our other match, uh, we had the luxury of having the the purple outline. But you know what? I like yellow as well. I don't mind yellow at all. Nah, I think I think purple is where I'm at, but I am also biased towards the color purple in general. I quite enjoy it, but it's also just me though. Yellow is okay. I find yellow looks cute in sweaters.
There you go. That's my opinion. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't like yellow at all, but you know, I think it is it is a very good highlight color. It is the base to highlight for any highlighter. It, the base is yellow, but with that being said, I do prefer purple as well. As you can see, we are well and underway here in round 16. And East Mac has already suffered some heavy casualties. The rush in was bold, and this um, at least works out by the end. It's 3v4, then inside the Viper's Pit. All you gotta do is just hold. As one entered, another one leaves. They go in to catch Arena. He's getting this all with a shorty, nonetheless. Impressive. But definitely the expected outcome I find as they're coming in one by one with no information and just blindly walking hoping they can even get to the spike. Yep, and then it will be a settles to make quick work of the lone player from Providence and get yet another round win for East Mac as they finally are able to tie this game up 8-8 eight to eight in Providence. Now have themselves a full buy after forcing that save in the previous round. Mm -hmm. Even as things go, four row, almost two away from the record set by Providence set in this game so far. See, they can do match it early haunt down. No information gained. As it was holding by a lobby. And instead, they could slow walk in. They've split before. Card to go for 3, 2, 1 to A. There are two members watching it, though. And again, it's going to be a really slow push here. There's already one early frag does go the way of East Mac. As out goes the Rolling Thunder. And the push will be going on towards the A site. In we go, my friend. One already gone for Providence. They put up the Nightfall. That's two taken away. And Providence losing the members left and right before the spike even falls. They rotate early. They stay on site. And they give away free gun duels. Yeah, that was a, a huge Nightfall there. I mean, I'm glad they were able to at least get one elimination out of it. But with that being said, they definitely threw everything, including the kitchen sink, at that at that A site. And unfortunately for them, they didn't have much to show for it as East Mac currently sits with the 4v2 advantage. Mm -hmm. Up top, seeing another. Just a jiggle peek is tough with no flashes. We'll try to dry walk in to battle somebody. Is uh is it is it even tougher call? And to leave Providence on the outside, just save me their gun. And they smack continue to snowball their, themselves. And you gotta keep in mind that was off of the timeout. That was with the full buy. It was all fair, it was all square, and East Smack still managed to come out on top. Again, making use of the great utility and also executing their alts to near perfection. We did see the the counter, the retake come in from Providence, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Now we're heading into round number 18 as East Mac will take the lead over Providence. Finally, after many Many rounds. They managed to pull things back. And only Providence still having to save up. You know, a bit of broken by. And this time though, they pull something different. It's always a slow walk into A, but now they walk into C. All the killjoy util is there. The rushing through garage. They don't see the killjoy just yet. And he's past the smoke now as they walk out, caught by the seas. And a 4v4 will be the result of the other trading. And you know, this is nothing too surprising coming out from East Mech. This is exactly how they were able to take the A site. They just did an absolute util dump. They did not wait, they did not falter, and they did not hesitate. They were able to move very quickly and use that increased pace in order to find an advantage over East Mech. And now East Mech has to hold if they want to continue Ooh. to hold on to this lead. One enemy remaining. Showstopper was stopped right away. A nice haunt and two beautiful shots from Yeet Enjoyer. But having to go past the crossfire that was there set up by East Mech makes things even tougher. And East Mech now only three rounds away from closing out this game. Yeah, this is looking pretty tough for Providence at the moment. 
Yeah, uh, once again, having to forfeit a round just so that way they can save up to now buy here into round number 19. And still not even being, being able to come out with the full buy. You do see at least one Aries there. And uh, Brizzo playing with the Odin down low. I saw that. Wouldn't mind a nice Odin. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, with that being said, this is a better opportunity than any for Providence to try and answer back now as they do all have full shields. They have two rounds essentially left to find an answer. This... And if they lose this, then it's a save next one if they want to try to force buy up or the final round if they do manage to lose that one as well. And I'll leave them now to think and ponder. Same garage push that was there previously. Cast not finding anybody, but does get the kill joy as they are passing through. So now they will at least know where one person is as the rest of the members of East Mac ought to find their way to position themselves on the site. There, it's complete chaos between all of them. They're taking two 1v1s. That's 3v5. Yeah, and Cass showing a lot of discipline there in Garage, being able to at least get one elimination in the process. But now, out goes the Rolling Thunder. Polo able to avoid the danger. Now peeks out through the side. Does find one, finds two. And now only the KJ remains for Providence. A 3v5 by the end, but it doesn't necessarily matter what the odds even are. Providence 2 with such a beautiful start. And now they see one. And completely turn things back again. East Mac wants this game. You know, like you said, there were really only two rounds left for Providence to try and answer back, and that was one of them. As you can see, it does look like they're going to force by up here, literally trying their last ditch hmm. effort. Because if they go down here, East Mac, uh, they're pretty much going to have a run away with it. They're they're going for the full investment into this next round. Yeah, that, that means that it'll be two force buys in a row. In fact. Uh, if they don't get this round again, which makes things even rough for to, 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 to try to contend again, sorry. And after the double garage pushes, it's on to A once again. Breach has uh, not pushed out, but watching the corner, chilling to see what goes on. There's the flash and a push it past it. Beautiful setup. But Brizzo, because he was not checked, he takes two. And finally, East Mech. Shot the round off with a disadvantage. Yeah, and you see Providence did not hesitate that time. They threw out that KJ lockdown ASAP and were able to make the most of it, at least deterring East Mech from trying to push any further. And now they have a huge player advantage, 5v3. But the last time East Mech had a 5v3 over towards the C site, they were able to take that to a win. So let's see if Providence can rectify previous mistakes and hold on to this advantage. They're still making so much noise, though. They even cut noise here. I see actually running around. Everybody knows what's going on. Which is the last thing you want to have happen the day for the trade for, for the trade angle, but it's a three v four still. Face your I think it stops the path from going down. Nightfall put out to, to all four members on the site. But Molly slow them. They can't be checked. Smoke comes up clutch on time. Providence actually saves the member. That's twenty seconds. They've got a plant. And at least they have heaven smoked off, but you can see it will not matter. Providence managed to answer back and none too soon with somewhat of a questionable buy, a very risky buy to say the least, but it pays off as Providence now put themselves within two of equalizing against East Mac. And uh, that was a good time out there, I think, because after the round just transpired, you got to be thinking, okay. We cannot let that to us happen. We cannot let that happen to us once again. They've been the only, they've been the only ones taking timeouts so far, especially when they are up ahead. As you look at Little Mac and Rob, two heavies in this game. Okay, now I know you're capping, all right? What, what, what is going on here? <laughs> two two heavies? I mean, I could say that Little Mac is a heavy hitter, but they're also a glass cannon. They are, I would not categorize them as a heavy. Rob, I still don't categorize as a heavy either. That That is like literally one of the most balanced uh characters in smash in my opinion and I, as you can see they do take their first stock thanks to the ko punch i, I don't know about the balance character interesting if anything annoying most definitely oh rob's Heavy, not annoying. He's a thousand cute. percent rob's mm. a cutie what game is rob from was he like was he a smash original Rob wasn't a game. Rob was a toy, a Nintendo toy. I think it came in some form of a game, but Rob was an actual, like, figure. Like, an actual figurine. Huh. Well, robot toy. Because, uh, like, I remember only seeing Rob 
in uh, Brawl, right? So that's where I first noticed his presence. Because I don't think he was in any of the game before that. But that's cool. I didn't realize that Rob was a is, is a Nintendo original in terms of toy. Yeah, so it was like a movable robot toy. You know, it was, it was really cool. It was like having like a little friend robot. Um, but with that being said, we're heading back into more Valorant action here on Haven East Mech. Uh, leading the way 11 to 9 over Providence. And Paul once again started things off. Week after week, we've seen their progression as a duelist. Although it's been mainly been on this jet, and I believe half the time it's been on Haven, in fact. But picks they managed to get have been phenomenal. And to leave East Mech looking at match point right now. Well, that's one way to get it. How about a flawless victory going the way of East Mech? As they do put themselves on match point. And Providence, once again, find themselves struggling in economy. This is going to be a tough match. This is going to be a tough round for them. And the way that East Mech is playing right now, it doesn't seem like they can be stopped. Especially going into the match point round with a full buy. You're looking at all mm -hmm. rifles and full shields for everyone on the side of East Mech. Mm-hmm. Tough calls, and on the other end for Providence, right, it's, uh, it is very broken, a bit of a potluck buy, as I call it, you know, Vandal at least, but two filled shields, a couple of halves, one none, and, and, uh, some shotguns as well, so, tough calls across the board, Providence spread out, uh, as they push out, in fact, out of garage with, I believe, which was the judge, but it's the run back onto the A site, and pull. Has to find a way to possibly get outside. They stopped the lockdown. So it's all good on that. And the nightfall, if anything, will do a decent amount of deterring for pushing past them. Cat comes out so big here. No, he gets caught. And you see, it's funny that we see Providence going actually like full retake mode here because more often than not in the previous rounds, we have seen Providence really try to stick the initial defense. And now they were kind of forced to play for retake. And it's, it seemed as though it was working until Polo just came away with a massive two-piece. And finally, the KJ does get eliminated for Providence, giving East Mech the win here on Haven. GG's over to them. It was a huge comeback as round after round. The way... The way the, the way they carried themselves to first half not their way but from almost a full round deficit is a solid way to show just your dominance as a team and now with smash bros joker and little mac going back and forth there are that recovery just just doesn't mean man <laughs> yeah the recovery is let's just say not adequate uh, for Little Mag is definitely a shortcoming, them being a, a short king themselves, going up against Joker now. And Joker, definitely one of the bigger meta picks from previous installments, especially here in Ultimate. And uh, now they have a one stock advantage over this Little Mag, who again, trying to mad dash, finally is able to connect and get the first stock off of Chairman. Yeah, Little Mac does seem like he's like 5'4 king, no? Yeah, I, I would... <laughs> that is my impression of him. Because I remember playing Punch Out uh, as a kid and so far, I would say, you know, the game, though, overall, really fun. But I don't think they ever really re revealed his height. Because now, Little Mac was whatever your height was. Yes, and that's why I called him a short king, because I myself am a short king. I, nice. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, like, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, categorizes as short. Pretty no, sure. it, it does not. That you is, sure? you, you, you were average height, so yeah. I'm a short. I'm 5'7". Okay. All right, well, regardless... We are well and underway here, and it looks though the final stock will be taken off a of Little Mac and Chairman as the Joker will be taking the game. Mm hmm. Yes, they will. As we near the end of our day, we still do have a couple more matches of Smash and Val left. So, y'all, stick around. See you in a bit.
Homies, final series of the night are currently upon us as I hit my mic. I'm Ravish Ravage, we're here by Captain Asoka. Um, we're about to head um, into it very, very soon. Yep, that we are. And I would like to take this moment that we uh, definitely are against mic abuse. Don't. There's no need to resort to physical violence against your microphone. And if you or anyone you know has a microphone out there that currently is under physical abuse, uh, speak out now and call us at 1-800-DON'T-BEAT-YOUR-MIC. Damn, bro. All right, fine. My bad. I won't, <laughs> I, I won't hit my mic anymore. It was an accident. <laughs> Jesus. That's what they all say. <laughs> Christ, Cap. Okay, anyways, it's, uh, it's all good for now as we look at Olympic and RD Cal. Another one of our top squads within the standings going up against one another. Four O's across the board. But Olympic this time is getting the best of the, of the 4 squad of Artie Kel. 10 to 7 as of right now. And you can see the first elimination going to be traded out here pretty evenly. It's going to be a 4v4 scenario. The spike goes down onto mid. And now only one player remains for Olympic. As you can see, they are managing to stay afloat. Out goes the blind from anime. And finally, the sage will be gunned down. Uh. You can actually take as well too as they put up the flash, but although that didn't necessarily connect, but it's still anime. The one more making things closer than ever for Artie Kel. Still three rounds though. They have to turn back. And not a bad ultimate at all. You got to make sure that you know you can secure that win, especially when you're in the late game like this. It, you really cannot just sit on anything. Make sure you use all your utility effectively. Make sure you're using your alts because again, an, an alt. I don't. What's the best way to say this? An alt in the hand is worth two alts on the field being used. I don't know. I don't think that. That's sure, not it. Man. That doesn't track. That's wait, the, wait, that doesn't really apply. Wait, hang on. One alt used is is worth two alts not used. How about that? No, still done. One alt used is still worth one alt not. I just use your alt, and that's it. Oh, nice shot. <laughs> Damn. Still though. A lot of people they got to go up against still as, as 4v5. Haunt spots one, I believe, by the end, but the Empress not put out for Olympic as they want to try to rush into things, but that may have been put out too early. Yeah, just a little bit here. But once again, we see that Olympic, unfortunately, does lose one of their players a little early here. Now, it is a full swing over towards the C site, and it looks pretty uncontended, so this should be a free plant. Indeed, it should, my friend, as a spike needs to rotate over faster than, than, than usual. Zenkai near managed to refresh the Empress coming around, seeing one more tail and oh, caught in the open, though. And we'll definitely take that, not able to make it past the wall, unfortunately. It's the final person, and all they lost was the initial the one gunfight Olympic now at the penultimate round of the game. Yeah, and a very nice Cosmic Divide there, too. And we even saw, you know, Zenkai nearly made it past the Cosmic Divide to try and avoid being eliminated, but they couldn't get there in time. So, again, just a great amount of presence coming from Olympic to take sight in mid-rotation as well. Uh, a really good job of adjusting and reacting to the amount of pressure that was coming from Audrey Kell. As now you can see, Olympic will have a three-round lead, and Audrey Kell looking a little worse for wear in terms of economy. Slow play so far. Let's go up onto A. Oh, first two catches are beautiful. And I only down the rest of them. The flash luckily popped out and take down two right away as well. As Olympic and RDK continue to trade rounds back and forth, but that is not how the three round, three round reference hit will be made up, unfortunately. RDK is point all five alive at Olympic. Open to just get a couple off the board. Yeah, this is not looking good for Olympic right now. Again, the spike still hanging around sewers over towards A, and Audrey Kell have a 5v2 player advantage. They will not be sweating this at the moment. This is a much-needed win for them if they can confirm and hold this around out as they will be able to answer back and should get a decent buy moving forward. And now Anime gets caught out in heaven. Hey. Going up. Still, it's still 2v5. You get the spike down, but... Might not be much more than that. 
unless they can look to snowball themselves and just complete 2v5. Comes in the ultimate, taking no chances. Already kill. Secure the round. And you know, we talked about it already, even though that we mishapped and couldn't really put the nail on the head. The point is, use your ultimates. Archery Kel held oh. nothing back. They made sure to call in their ultimates to secure the dub. And now they have afforded themselves another round. They have afforded themselves another full buy as we get ready to head into round number 21. Archie Kel needs to make up a decent deficit for, and has to start from here. They have the... They have the alternate from the Phoenix. If they wanted to use that to find some info early on, the running back has been used as, uh, you know, some has been used as to to some agreements and weird effect. Because in terms of the anchoring that RDK has done with just one of the duelist, as right now, hearing no sound cue, so that's not going to be used just yet. Left in you up top, saw one. And look at lifting you, able to use the smoke there to get one elimination, looks to get two, but eventually does get gunned down. And now Olympic, presence known, full send on towards the seaside, and they have taken full control. Ardry Kell, now not looking good as they are at a 4v2 disadvantage. That's one found, running back still available, 2v3. Ardry Kell, and it uses now, there we go, that's the flash shot, getting all three of them. A beautiful start, but and then from here trying to find more clears almost all three, and now in one v two gets the health back. Face friend watching the angle, but concussed he can't do it. All right, so what I'm getting is that anime is the main protagonist, and they have plot armor because that was absolutely insane. They went on a tear with only ten health remaining, able to use the run it back and literally effectively use all of their blinds to come up with a huge four piece and come in with a clutch, much needed win for Audrey Kell. They are now within one of equalizing against Olympic. All they got to do is get this round. That is it. it. They were down two, but slowly but surely, improving on the anchoring, getting first picks off, and Olympic. Got, got a couple of seconds to decide. Okay, how do you play into this round? Thrash is available right now. That Olympic definitely don't want to give give up this lead. See, it seems to be open. I don't know how much choice they have here. This is still going to be tough. Again, it's somewhat of, uh, of I don't want to say a half buy, but you know, you got Facebook friend with a Marshall here trying to do what they can with it. They do find one peak onto Audrey Kell, and now the spike is I going to be exactly. planted freely on the seaside. As now neural theft will be going out as well. Is Thrash going out? I don't believe he managed to get any picks off here, but instead it's the open angle on the way now. One taken. Rest of Audrey Kell, flood out of the side, 3v3 still. As all side Ryan caught the corner, taking two before. He doesn't even fall either, and Cole can't aim, is stuck. Info Garner, there you go, finally gets peaked at Olympic. Go to match point. Yeah, that they do, and Audrey Kell, honestly, had they won that round, they would have equalized and probably had an even bigger advantage to take the lead, but. It will be Olympic to come in clutch and hold on to that lead just barely. But now, this is where things are going to get very sweaty. Audrey Kell with their last ditch effort here to try and hold on in regulation and possibly send us into extra rounds. Entirely possible here, my friend. Up like that, it uh, <laughs> makes it a bit more interesting. Audrey Kell is shaking things up. They're not gonna actually walk into it. They see one, but past the haunt that you're not allowed to enter, dumping the util at the entrance. And Ryan on the flank coming around. And this time, C is not giving up for free. They do have at least one player anchoring over there for Audrey Kell onto the C site, as it will be Olympic forcing their way on. And now Sasagayo. Sasagio is going to be go. gunned down, and Audrey Kell comes in with a full four-piece and a flawless victory there in round 23. Just when we count them out for even a second, Audrey Kell brings things back, and like you're mentioning, entirely possible that we do take this to OT for themselves, as the buy for Olympic is not great. 
It's stingers, you know, a specter, and only two here rifle as well. They have the res up. Sasagi has a nightfall here too. One way from Zenkai's uh, Empress as well. And alt economy right now on, on RGKL looks pretty barren. So this is their chance to close things out if possible. And a first pick could do it, especially if they can find Ko and open up B. That fall sees two as they're rushing on in. And you can see it's going to be an absolute full sin now coming from Olympic, but that might have costed them. As you can see, they did lose two players in the crossfire, and now Seagull can't aim, trying to fire from the outside in, and it's lifting you to find the shot with the op. And finally, Black Adam will put an end to Ryan, tying us up 12 to 12, and Ravish, we have overtime. The second OT of the day. This week was going to get competitive, and we knew that coming in as well. The top squad battling it out one after one. And what is this, like six or seven week league as well too? We headed to playoffs well. This is a treat for all of us to do an experience. Yeah, and you know what? I think overtimes are especially interesting on Haven just because, you know, it is a three-sided map. It, it There's a lot of different approaches to really getting onto site or retaking it. So uh, once you go into overtime, you know, you get to see where a lot of these trick plays come in. And I'm interested to see on what type of plays we see come out between these two as we get round 25 underway. Slow plays from both sides. As Olympic had invested it all, at least not both sides have buys in their hands. But this time, though, for Audrey Kell, the attacking, you know, was still pretty back and forth. The look around A for Here. they can get any Utah dumps or just maybe a pick off, but looks to be a full commit, a split on a 3 2. Yeah, it looks as though that RG Kell is just trying to find that early pick, and I do not blame them whatsoever. Once you go into OT, you have got to play for pick to give your team an early advantage, and now they are going to go full send onto the A site. They do get the first pick and the second. This is a huge push coming from RG Kell as the spike will be planted, and RG Kell now has a 3v1 advantage over Olympic. They explode on the side using the fault line to clear out the entire lane. And that was where unfortunately Olympic was centered. And so that cost the major gun duels that we're gonna have. But also with that too, using the get with the dizzy to slime everybody there. And so that them with pretty much an open site, all we had to do was take the gunfight one by one. A 3v1 left, like you're saying. Facebook friend, open to see if they can find anybody. Sees one, there's the next peek out. Back and Flash forth off. we go. go Audrey Kell. Up one. Switching sides. Match point. Yeah, Audrey Kell now on match point. Off of the heels of what was a pretty astounding comeback. They now have the opportunity to end things here and now. They are going to have their chance to win this one out on the defensive side of the spike. Is now Olympic. Is going to have a chance to send this match even further. This time on the attacker side. This was where they're making their run, and Audrey Kell has done exactly that. Round after round after round after round. Close calls across the board. And now here, similar defense that we've experienced already. Uses the breach to slow them. Pyramid has made his way into garage. As people watching Seaside as well. Nothing on the entrance is four person push into Let's see. And you know what? This approach has been working on both sides. This this really slow push, slow rotation, except for instead of being on A Ooh. for the side of Olympic, it's going to be going over towards C as the oh. elimination start coming out now. Audrey Kell is able to get a couple and now give themselves a 4v3 advantage as the spike makes its way over towards mid. That is very very unlucky especially with a peek out towards the back of c that could have been definitely in a trade but and they see one on top that's wingman who gets it and then all they gotta do is just check ryan he's in a 1v3 it would be such a hero play if you can do it but he's flash he's in cussed that's our recal maintaining the 5-0 
Last round in the half. But here we got somebody else playing here, my friend. Uh, a nine to two going off for Butler and Hopewell. Nice. Yep, a nice fresh match here on Ascent after seeing the conclusion on Haven. Ending with Audrey Kell taking an impressive win, but now I'll find them. We come to see a Butler v Hopewell, and Butler off to a fantastic start. There's really no other way to say it. Nine to two split, looking to go into the second half of this match. Ten to two. He's just running at him. Oh my God, that's two taken now. Hopewell does not have a chance. This remember Butler is also one of the top teams here in the bracket too. Sees one more. A uh hard. -huh. A little bit of overheat. But still enough to distort them off. They just continued running at them and spraying. That was four seconds of the round. Jesus Christ. Yep, well, there you have it. We're going to go into the second half with a 10 to 2 lead in favor of Again, Butler. Again. But this is the opportunity for Hopewell to answer back. Granted, the descent is the 50 50 map, so there's really no advantage going onto one side of the spike or the other. This does give a fresh start for Hopewell to try and make some changes and adjustments necessary in order to answer back against Butler. Mm hmm. Continuing to perhaps. It seems to perhaps run over Hopewell, or maybe Butler can has to face the reality and we set we set their momentum as well. As well, somebody got a DM here, Cap. Did you get a DM? I didn't get a DM. No, I didn't get a DM. <laughs> no. No, my wife, my wife is the only one who DMs me and she's across the hall, so no, no, no DMs for me. <laughs> I don't know either. Everybody in chat, check if we got a DM as well. I'm <laughs> better you guys. But Rams takes two, just standing up front. Two for one trade is one they're very happy with, naturally. And Butler now on the outside, speculating around, but the Raiders also did it. Watch the flank. The seize Pochi, upward angle. Gotta be careful. Has no leaders here either. And just instead decides to take the gunfight just raw. Now we're and and oh, finally, I'm... it will be Pochi Pochi to get the head click with the sheriff after several attempts. Nearly being eliminated themselves. Only 45 health remaining for Pochi Pochi. But they've also lost a lot of space in terms of how they are centered as well. So they'll have to go back onto A. The Cypher is still on site watching by Jen. So the pickup can still be there. The smoke there. And yep. They're making a ton of noise as they're just popping in back and forth. 35 seconds still. So not at the end of it. Makipo with one. And Hopewell with just Neff left. That's it. Yep, Butler having a fantastic time here on Ascent, being able to take yet another round win. And we'll get a little bit of extra moolah going into the next round as well. They should be able to buy up, giving themselves an advantage, more than likely the dub, as we get ready to head into round number 14, and then inevitably putting them on match point. All they gotta do is snowball the last, and like you're saying, it's... It's been just superior gunplay and prowess shown throughout the entire side of, of Butler. With the Domus is currently there. And now with the bonus as well with them. This should be what we see. Standing ahead. That's one already gone as a peek out through B main. They should see a couple more crossing here too. And yes, they do. <laughs> Info Garner by a tree, even before they can cross in. It's taken down and they're playing 3v5 consistently. Gray goes up. But it's just constellation prizes for now. No Spike guns taken away. Spike the spike is a. dropped. And so far, it's a pretty expensive round for Butler. They did lose two of their players. Let's make it three. So that's three guaranteed rebuys that they're going to have to make next round. As Gray is just having an absolute field day with this sheriff and has done a significant damage to Butler. All that remains is for them to try and close this one out. If he goes to pass the smoke, he'll definitely be in trouble trying to see if anybody peeks him by heaven. He has the line up there. And, no, and the unfortunate part is that they're, they are out of updrafts. And they know they have to get the spike. And now you see them. Now you don't. Sacrifice with four. 
as you go at a match point. Match point. And you know, there's really not much we can ask, you know, of Gray. They they tried to do their best. They really did. And all they had was a sheriff in hand. There really wasn't too many good ways for that to end unless, once again, we see some miracle play, which we have been graced with previously throughout the night. But it mm -hmm. is it's very unlikely that we were going to see that happen again. And now Butler is on match point, and this will be the last attempt from Hopewell as they do not have the best buy. And it's going to be a whole barrage of bulldogs coming from Butler. Butler's got it all. They're deciding if, even if they can't necessarily get the hero on, hero up was online, they will still use some sort of gun. And already mid two taking the same peek out in Bay Main. And that is, they just rush at them. Flawless. Defenders now, you, you want to see the school spirit coming from Butler. It's I believe their mascot is, in fact, the Bulldog. So they all mm -hmm. went with the Bulldog in unison as a team, as a school. That's, that's true Love spirit that. right there. As we got Dr. Mario, your favorite character. Uh, we got up against Cloud. Dr. Mario did win against the Kazuya, in fact. So impressive nonetheless. Yeah, it's impressive. You know, the doctor was able to prescribe at least a one-round win. But with that being said, now Cloud has come out to try their chance against Dr. Mario. And let's see how this one goes. Mm. For now, they just blow straight. Cloud has managed to read the maximum limit. Doesn't take much advantage of it, though, unfortunately. Not much damage at all. Done at all. A lot of up Bs for them for now. And Dr. Mario playing the spacing well. He's chilling. Yeah. Hmm. Did Dr. Mario make an appearance in the Super Mario movie? I haven't seen it. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen it either yet, but I intend to. And considering that the movie has actually done really well, I assume Dr. Mario wasn't in it. But oh, yeah. with that being said, Cloud trying to make a comeback here. As you can see, they are down in the deficit as far as damage percentage is concerned. But with that move there, they will get a one stock advantage and the no. revenge stock comes in just in time. Man, there's so many movies I still gotta watch, bro. Like this, the, the Super Mario Bros. movie, the Barbie movie. I still gotta watch Puss in Boots. I haven't done that yet either. So many good things, but by the way, right now the only only one uh, where the sword is cloud. So we'll see if they have the same sort of charisma. That is unfortunate. Homie stock was just given away, but it'll leave them without villainous trying to make up for lost time. But it's it it, it looked tough, especially since Doctor Mario is carrying forward the momentum from the last game and. You look pretty good. Yep, Dr. Mario having themselves a fantastic time here, but what? I'm not sure what happened there. I got caught in a freeze frame, but finally the up smash does land for Villainous, and we are mm -hmm. back down to one stock apiece. Indeed, as Dr. Mario wasn't able to rack up a ton of damage in the previous rounds, but right now, though, they're, they want to close things out. But perhaps Cloud can do the exact opposite. 102, but the limit level is huge. A bit more damage, and Dr. Mario is not very heavy, so this is where things get tough. And that's the all limit used for up to 63. It's not going to be enough just yet. Yeah, but though. how about a nice forward smash at the hands of Dr. Mario, prescribing you a timeout in the blast zone, coming through with the win and getting the dub over Cloud. Mm-hmm. That all ends it off 2-0 for Dr. Mario. With that, we have reached the end of our day, my friend. Thank you once again. Being by my side, big shout out to our observer here, Meg, and of course, uh, Dapper Source behind the screen to make us look good with his 19 different buttons that he has in front of himself. Uh, thank you all once again for watching. We'll be back again next week. Same time, same place. Uh, catch y'all then. Peace.